To honor and accept one's own shadow is a profound spiritual discipline. It is whole-making and thus holy, and the most important experience of a lifetime. Robert A. Johnson was an American author and Jungian analyst, a follower of Carl Jung's analytical psychology. At the age of 11, he had a near-death experience in a car crash and was rushed to the hospital. He found that the nothingness, the blackness, was also the ecstatic world. He saw the world golden in visions. When they saved his life and the vision stopped, he could not bear to live. In therapy, he was convinced to live because without the human faculty, he could not see the things which he treasured so much. Robert had a great difficulty with the outer world. At one point he was known as Parsifal, an innocent fool. He experienced many slender threats between life and death during his life. Exploring the inner world helped him tremendously. His encounter with Jung was decisive, he wrote. Dr. Jung told me to spend most of my time alone have a separate room in the house to be used for nothing but inner work, never to join any organization or collectivity. Dr. Jung told me that the unconscious would protect me, give me everything that I needed for my life, and that my one duty was to do my inner work. All else would follow from this. He said it was not the least important whether I accomplished anything outwardly in this life, since my one task was to contribute to the evolution of the collective unconscious. At the age of 54, and feeling lost in his life, Robert visited India alone. After a long and exhausting trip, and having lost his luggage, he went to his hotel and wanted nothing else than to sleep the whole day. He looked outside the window and was struck by the beauty of the sight. He experienced the golden world a second time after many decades. He was given a second chance. If you trust the inner world, it will take care of you. The golden world is there all the time. It is a misconception to think that we produce it or earn it. It is not some other place or time, but a state of consciousness, an experience open to anyone, at any time and at any place. The kingdom of God is within. Robert has published books such as He, Understanding Masculine Psychology, She, Understanding Feminine Psychology, and Owning Your Own Shadow, understanding the dark side of the psyche, among others. We will be focusing on the third one. In our times, the water of life lies not in the external world, but rather within. The exploration of our inner world is the most important task in our lives. For this, one must go beyond the ego, what we are and know consciously, and delve into the shadow. Robert refers to Jung's early usage of the term, the part of us we fail to see or know, anything that is part of the unconscious. There are many misconceptions regarding the concept of shadow. It is commonly seen as evil, dark, and something to be avoided. However, this is not the case. The shadow is not a detached thing that is not part of oneself, or the embodiment of the devil. It is a part of you. It cannot and should not be avoided, for you will be going against yourself. We all have a shadow walking behind us, both literally and metaphorically, it is the mirror image of ourselves that we cannot see. It represents those aspects that we lack. It has a compensatory role that seeks to restore a wholeness of personality. For instance, the shadow of a criminal would not have murderous impulses, but the opposite, sincerity, relatedness, tenderness, etc. The shadow of a shy person would be assertiveness, commitment, responsibility, etc. By displaying only the pleasant parts and highlights of oneself, and by denying one's emotions and inner feelings, because one wants to, for example, be likable or avoid conflict, one will build resentment that will go directly to the shadow and be projected onto others unconsciously. We must recognize that we are capable of both good and evil. That is the only reality. To deny darkness is to deny half of oneself. With this in mind, most of us strive for a life of goodness, tranquility, and happiness. The shadow is not to be seen as our enemy, but our friend. It contains pure gold, waiting to be integrated into our personality. The shadow only becomes hostile 
when it is ignored or misunderstood. That is when it takes control of us, because we are not willing to. You can either be led and guided in life by your shadow, or be dragged through life by it, leading to neurotic behavior. It is not good that makes holy, it is the union of both good and evil that gives way to the transcendent. So, how does the shadow originate? Our refused and unacceptable characteristics do not go away. They only collect in the dark corners of our personality. When they have been hidden long enough, they take a life of their own, the shadow life. If it accumulates more energy than our ego, it erupts as an overpowering rage. Someone once told Jung, How do you find your shadow? He replied, How do you find the dragon that has swallowed you? By definition, the shadow is a part of you that you don't know. You don't talk about your own shadow. If you can talk about it, it is already conscious and no longer shadow. As such, other people are more likely to see your shadow first. An embarrassing reality. We are all born whole, but somehow culture demands that we live out only part of our nature and refuse other parts of ourselves. We divide the self into an ego and a shadow because our culture insists that we behave in a particular manner. This is our legacy from having eaten of the fruit of the tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden, gaining consciousness of good and evil. The shadow can also be seen as sin, and the self as the figure of Christ. Culture is the great leveling process. It brings everyone down to the same level. This means that also some of the pure gold of our personality goes into the shadow. Robert writes, Curiously, people resist the noble aspects of their shadow more strenuously than they hide the dark sides. To draw the skeleton out of the closet is relatively easy, but to own the gold in the shadow is terrifying. It is more disrupting to find that you have a profound nobility of character than to find out you are a bum. Ignoring the shadow is to ignore the inner gold, and many only discover their gold when they suffer from severe or life-threatening illness. This intense experience shows us that an important part of us is lying dormant. The archetype of the wounded healer is one who has learned to cure himself and find the gold in his experience. This is typically the role of the shaman who often falls ill, only to gain the insight needed to heal himself and bring wisdom to his people, the elixir of life. As we reach adulthood, we have a clearly defined ego and shadow, a system of right and wrong. The religious task is to restore the wholeness of personality. Religion means to put things back together again, to connect whatever is fractured. This is the job of the religious life. We modern people are broken within. The truth is hard to bear, and we do not want to hear that there's something in the world more important than our ego. Something needs to die. Not our bodies, but the ego. Robert writes, Generally, the first half of life is devoted to the cultural process, gaining one's skills, raising a family, disciplining oneself in a hundred different ways. The second half of life is devoted to restoring a wholeness, making holy of life. Robert uses the image of the teeter-tarter or seesaw to illustrate our personality. On the right side we have our acceptable qualities, the righteous side, and on the left side we have those qualities that are unacceptable, the forbidden side. No quality can ever be discarded, it can only be moved between these two sides of the seesaw. A law prevails that most of us choose to ignore completely. The seesaw must be balanced if one is to remain in psychic equilibrium. If one indulges characteristics on the right side, they must be balanced by an equal weight on the left side. The reverse is equally true. This instability is what causes mood swings, or suddenly acting as a completely different person. On the other hand, if the seesaw is too heavily loaded, it may also break at the center point. This is a psychosis or breakdown. While we take the balance of, say, our body temperature for granted, we rarely recognize that the psyche also has its way of keeping a balance. This idea is illustrated in a medieval manuscript of the Tree of Knowledge produced from Adam's navel. On the left, the Virgin Mary is clothed as a nun, picking fruit from the tree and handing it out to a long line of penitents for their salvation. Eve, naked, 
stands on the right, picking fruit from the same tree, handing it out to a long line of people for their damnation. This single tree gives a dual product. Whenever we pluck from the fruit of creativity, our other hand plucks the fruit of destruction. We would love to have creativity without destruction, but that is not possible. Our resistance to this insight is very high. The prevailing attitude of goodness or sainthood is to live as much as possible on the right hand, the good side of the seesaw. But such a condition would be unstable. The holy place is the center point. While we must hide our dark side from society, we should never hide it from ourselves. Robert writes, Of course we're going to have a shadow. Saint Augustine, in the city of God, thundered, To act is to sin. To create is to destroy at the same moment. We cannot make light without a corresponding darkness. India balances Brahma, the god of creation, with Shiva, the god of destruction, and Vishnu sits in the middle, keeping the opposites together. No one can escape the dark side of life, but we can pay out that dark side intelligently. The balance of light and dark is ultimately possible and bearable. This is one of Jung's great insights, that the ego and the shadow come from the same source and exactly balance each other. To make light is to make shadow. One cannot exist without the other. To own one's own shadow is to reach a holy place, an inner center not attainable in any other way. To fail this is to fail one's own sainthood and to miss the purpose of life. It is not perfection that we must strive for, but wholeness. This is how the joy of life is created. It is embracing our own humanity, our strengths and flaws, and not a one-sided goodness that has no vitality or life. Robert writes, I remember a weekend when I put up with very difficult guests who stayed days beyond their invitation. I exercised Herculean patience and courtesy and sighed in great relief when they left. I thought I had earned something nice by my virtue, so I went to the nursery to buy something beautiful for my garden. Before I knew what was happening, I picked a fight with the nurseryman and made a miserable spectacle of myself. Since I did not pick up my shadow consciously, I landed it on this poor stranger. Balance was served, but in a clumsy and stupid way. One has to honor one's shadow, for it is an integral part of oneself, but one must not push it onto someone else. The shadow will claim its dues in some form, intelligent or stupid. Projection is always easier than assimilation. It is only possible to do one's best and live a decent civilized life if we acknowledge this other dimension of reality. We all have the potential for evil. That is what unites all of us. Those who deny this are often those who fall prey to their own shadow. To refuse the dark side of one's nature is to store up or accumulate the darkness. This is later expressed as a black mood, psychosomatic illness, or unconsciously inspired accidents. We are present dealing with the accumulation of a whole society that has worshipped its light side and refused the dark, and this residue appears as war, economic chaos, strikes, racial intolerance. The front page of any newspaper hurls the collective shadow at us. We must be whole whether we like it or not. The only choice is whether we will incorporate the shadow consciously and with some dignity, or do it through some neurotic behavior. The tendency to see one's shadow out there in a specific person or a group of people is the most dangerous aspect of the modern psyche. Not only does it affect others negatively, but also oneself. It is only by taking the shadow back into oneself that one can assimilate it. You must return to where it first originated and where it is required for your own wholeness. It is common for two people's shadows to be at each other. This rarely leads anywhere as both of them are entirely at the mercy of the unconscious. To be in the presence of another shadow and not reply is nothing short of genius. Goethe's Faust is a great example in literature of the meeting of ego and shadow. Faust is a scholar who finds that life is meaningless and contemplates suicide. His seesaw has reached the breaking point. At this moment, he meets with his shadow, Mephistopheles. Through their perseverance, Faust is saved from his lifelessness and becomes capable of passion, 
and Mephistopheles discovers his capacity to love. Love is the one word in our Western tradition adequate to describe the synthesis of ego and shadow. One of the hardest things to understand is that we often refuse to accept our noble traits and instead find a shadow substitute for them. People are as frightened of their capacity for nobility as of the darkest sides. If you find the gold in someone, he will resist it to the last ounce of his strength. This is why we indulge in hero worship so often. All our energy lies in our shadow, and ignoring it makes us feel lifeless, exhausted and lazy. A confrontation with one's shadow fills one up with energy and stamina, which we can use for our daily tasks and work. Robert writes, A wise woman once showed me how to get more energy when I complained that I was exhausted before lecturing. She instructed me to go to a private room just before the talk, take a towel, dampen it so it would be very heavy, then throw the towel wrapped up in a ball at the floor as hard as I could, and shout. I felt infinitely foolish doing this, for it is not my style. But when I walked out to the lecture platform after such an exercise, there was fire in my eyes. I had energy and stamina and voice. I did a courteous, well-structured lecture. The shadow begged me, but did not overwhelm me. Parrots learn profanity more easily than common phrases, since we utter our curses with so much vigor. The parrot doesn't know the meaning of these words, but he hears the energy invested in them. Even animals can pick up on the power we have hidden in the shadow. In middle age, one gets tired of the involuntary round trips between the two ends of the seesaw. To our surprise, that middle ground is not the great compromise that we feared, but the place of ecstasy and joy. If we learn how to take the energy of the shadow and use it correctly, it can set the stage for a whole new phase of life. In a shadow ritual, one must find one of the left hand contents and give it expression in some way that does not damage the right hand personality. One can offer a sacrifice in multiple ways, such as writing the shadow material down and then burning the paper. A symbolic or ceremonial ritual affects one as much as any event as long as it means something for you. All healthy societies have a rich ceremonial life to pay out their shadow in a symbolic way, through fasting, sacrifice, sexual abstention, etc. We must acknowledge the whole of reality, destruction and creation, evil and redemption. Our fondness for the light blinds us to the greater reality and keeps us from this larger vision of wholeness. Paradox is that water of life we need so badly in our modern world. All the great myths give instructions on this subject and remind us that the treasure will be found in one of the least likely places. Strangely, the best can come from the most neglected quarter. We will go to almost any length to avoid this painful paradox, but in that refusal we only confine ourselves to the useless experience of contradiction. Contradiction brings the crushing burden of meaninglessness. One can endure any suffering if it has meaning, but meaninglessness is unbearable. Contradiction is barren and destructive, yet paradox is creative. It is a powerful embracing of reality. Every human experience can be expressed in terms of paradox. Day is comprehensible only in contrast to night. Masculinity has relevance only in contrast to femininity. Activity has meaning only in relation to rest. Up is only possible in the presence of down. Where would I be without you? Where is joy not bounded by sobriety? To advance from opposition, always a quarrel, to paradox, always holy, is to make a leap of consciousness. That leap takes us through the chaos of middle age and gives a vista that enlightens the remaining years of life. Winning and losing, eating and fasting, earning and giving, these are not opposites, but are all necessary to the human condition. Every one of us lives in this contradiction. So what do we do with this apparently insufferable contradiction? That is essentially the question that is at the base of every neurotic dissociation and every psychological problem. If we go at the question wrongly, we are bound in a neurotic paralysis in which we can do nothing. We cannot act or be still. This is where many people stand, and their suffering is intense. Danish philosopher Kierkegaard expresses this as exemplifying the life of the aesthete who chases pleasure but is struck with despair. He writes, I can't be bothered. 
I can't be bothered to ride, the motion is too violent. I can't be bothered to walk, it's strenuous. I can't be bothered to lie down, for either I would have to stay lying down, and that I can't be bothered with, or I would have to get up again, and I can't be bothered with that either. In short, I just can't be bothered. Kierkegaard, too, believes that paradox is the solution to despair, which can only be found in taking the leap of faith towards God. To think that one way of action is profane and another sacred is to make a terrible misuse of language. This is a flaming, flagrant error and is the seat of most of the neurotic suffering in humankind. Religion bridges or heals, it restores and reconciles the opposition that have been torturing each of us, it helps us move from contradiction, that painful condition where things oppose each other, to the realm of paradox, where we are able to entertain simultaneously two contradictory notions and give them equal dignity. The English poet William Blake also spoke about the need to reconcile both the light and the dark parts of the self. He said we should go to heaven for form and to hell for energy and marry the two. Most people spend their entire life energy supporting the war of opposites within themselves. This only brings despair. In the miracle of the paradox, it is good to win, it is also good to lose, it is good to have, it is also good not to have. Each represents a reality, a truth. To stay loyal to paradox is to earn the right to wholeness. Fanaticism is always a sign that one has adopted one of the pair of opposites at the expense of the other. The high energy of fanaticism is a frantic effort to keep one half of the truth at bay while the other half takes control. This always yields a brittle personality of always being right. But what has paradox to do with the shadow? It has everything to do with the shadow, for there can be no paradox, that sublime place of reconciliation, until one has owned one's own shadow and drawn it up to a place of dignity and worth. To own one's own shadow is to prepare the ground for spiritual experience, conflict to paradox, to revelation, that is the divine progression. Who does not spend much of his time debating whether to do the disciplined task or to goof off a bit longer and stay in dreamy nowhere? Neither is holy, but exactly in the paradox between them lies the holy place. To be in a situation where there's no way out or to be in a conflict where there's no solution is the classical beginning of individuation or self-realization. In this state, the unconscious wants the hopeless conflict in order to put ego consciousness up against the wall, so that one has to realize that whatever one does is wrong. This is an act of humility that invites one to see beyond the ego to that which is greater than ourselves. We know that the mandala is the holy circle that represents wholeness, the self. Mandalas are devices that remind us of our unity with God and with all living things. In Tibet, a teacher often draws a mandala for a student and leaves him to meditate on the symbol for many years before he gives the next step of instruction. The mandala, however, is an idea that is rarely talked about. The mandala also has a healing effect, but its form is somewhat different. It is an almond-shaped segment that is made when two circles partly overlap. This symbol signifies nothing less than the overlap of the opposites that we have been investigating. It instructs us how to engage in reconciliation. We can often see Christ or the Virgin Mary in its center. By definition, Christ himself is the intersection of the divine and the human. He is the prototype for the reconciliation of opposites and our guide out of the realm of conflict and duality. When one is tired or discouraged by life that one can no longer bear to live, the mandala shows what one may do. When the most Herculean efforts and the finest discipline no longer keep the painful contradictions of life at bay, we are all in need of the mandala. Our own healing proceeds from that overlap of what we call good and evil, light and dark. It is not the light element alone that does the healing. The place where light and dark begin to touch is the most profound religious experience we can have in life. We like to think that a story is based on the triumph of good over evil, but the deeper truth is that good and evil are superseded and the two become one. When one is truly both a citizen of heaven and earth, 
one finally realizes that there was only one circle all the time. This is the fulfillment of the Christian goal. The two circles were only the optical illusion of our capacity and need to see things double. If one makes a mandola in the privacy of one's interior life, it is heard for more than a thousand miles. People often asked Jung, will we make it? Referring to the cataclysm of our time, he always replied, if enough people will do their inner work. The acknowledgement of one's shadow diminishes shadow projection and helps to contribute less to the general darkness of the world by not adding to the collective shadow that fuels war, division, and strife. But we also prepare the way for the mandola, that ultimate place of wholeness in one's inner life, the great prize of human consciousness. In the Four Quartets, T.S. Eliot writes, the fire and the rose are one. By overlapping the two elements of fire and flower, he makes a mandola. We are pleased to the depth of our soul to be told that the fire of transformation and the flower of rebirth are one and the same. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, comment or share the content. Support the channel on Patreon to help spread the fundamental questions of existence. I'm scared of this pawn slave guy. We gotta go hundreds and thousands of years back to even find a story of a great motherfucker to even figure out how to partially embody that life and lifestyle. I didn't do all this going, I'm gonna get money, fame, attention, and be a hero. I said, I'm gonna step out into faith into what's true and what's right and see what the fuck my power really is and what's working with me. It's inherent hierarchical power and value system. Doesn't matter what everyone else says the power is and the value is. You do this walk and you're guaranteed a certain amount of power and value because it's rare, because it's based in truth. And the world is living a lot, predominantly. It's a cause and effect based endeavor. You do this, you get this. You don't do this, you get this. It's been the same from the beginning of time. Culture and society is our enemy in a sense. Not that we have to do war on it, but you know, culture, society, and what it creates is not your friend and it doesn't benefit you. It takes you away from who and what you truly are and gives you a set of value systems that are not inherently true or valuable. They're just valuable to that society and that culture. You don't even need a cosmic explanation to know I'm going to be a man as it pertains to my apprehension and I'm not foregoing that for anyone else's coercion and duress. And I'm not a slave of the state. If anything, I'm a child of God and I'm a servant of that and the truth. And I'm uh, in a covenant with that force or that thing, if you want to call it. You know, it's basically just pure understanding who and what you are versus what you're not here to do. So you can ignore it to your own detriment. You all have to continue to serve some vision that's not yours indefinitely and you don't know when it ends. And by the time it does end, you're going to be too old and broken down and burnt out and tired to even give a fuck. I could do whatever the fuck I want every moment of my day. I'm guaranteed value. I live within my means. I have everything I need and then some and I'm working toward a goal. And again, to me, the tiger that you don't believe in is the tiger that will eat you. Right? You want to sit there and act like it's all going to just be cute and cuddly and go on forever and never consider the obvious common sense cause and effect. How are you living day to day and what's the source of this beingness? And if you're not going to be the source of that beingness, you're dependent upon someone or something else. That's a fucked up place to be, you know, especially in times of trouble. <laughs> Greetings, folks. We're back at it. Indoor command center day. It's a bit blustery outside, so you know when it gets nicer. We'll be back out there. Why the hell not? Uh, I got someone in the back here. Let's see, let me see what I got going on here. Oh, I got Poncho Swayze. Greetings, Poncho Swayze. And then I have uh, Giggles Hiking Coach was back there. Oh, it's Brian O'Shea, well, uh, aka Pizwater in the industry. How are you, sir? Well, I'm doing great, man. Um, yeah, O2W is a Nazi blocker on Striker's channel. Oh yeah, what? What? Because he threw you out. 
Yeah, Timmy, you know, had to like pipe up. Oh, Brian, he's so worried all day long about what people in the crowd think of him and his performances. You know, so I have to right. give him the business. Yeah, not right. The crew, I had to go on Snafu's stream and let him know. Crew's on his ass. Crew optics high. All right. Yeah. Well, speaking of Brian O'Shea. Good. Do you have anything, uh, Mr. Swayze? Let me address Poncho Swayze. You're feeding back, sir, I think, a little bit, but how are you? Hello? Okay. Brian O'Shea, can you still hear me? Am I good to go? Audience, hello? Am I here? Are we here? All right, we're here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I got Brian O'Shea from last night. Uh, let's see here. Turnbuckle open mic. So let's view some of that where we've been keeping abreast of Brian O'Shea's, uh, you know, ongoing comedic career, comedy career. Can I tell uh, you how the show this... worked first? Yeah. So it's a wrestling theme show called Chuckles and Turnbuckles. And um, the way it works is you pair up comedians and each just do your normal comedy set, but. At the end of your comedy sets, you, you each stand on stage, and then the audience either boos or cheers for the winner, you know? So it's kind of like a competition. Right. So this is round one, me versus another comic. All right, let's check that out. Five pounds from Chicago, Illinois, Brian Pizzwater. <laughs> Old Piz Water. Yeah. Give it up for the newly dating couple over by the fucking cooking shit. <laughs> They're all clingy and she's hanging all over them. Uh, I think he's using her for a place to stay. <laughs> it's cold out here at night. <laughs> you guys are all right, man. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? Who'd you come here to support? She sucks, right? <laughs> What's wrong with your hair? Acting weird. You have great posture, though. <laughs> How long have you guys been dating? Why do you talk like that? <laughs> hey, is this gonna be tall black guy? You know Bobby Sticks? <laughs> You're all right, man. <laughs> hey, there's some black people over there. What's up, sweetheart? You single? Ready to mingle? Jingle, jingle? Santa Claus. <laughs> I have a gray beard and a big belly. My nose is red. It's your problem, everyone. It's another black chick. You single? I'm just counting how many black people there are. I don't give a shit. You single or not? <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? There's some white dweebs. <laughs> what do you think of these thick black chicks? You guys can't handle that shit. Break your ass in half. DDT you. Suplex you right onto the bed. You guys are pretty they cool. pregnant very easily. <laughs> I like to go raw, so be careful. <laughs> Mark Safford's there. <laughs> Always makes everyone happy. <laughs> Were you breaking eye contact with me for whatever her fucking name is? Yeah, she just turns away. Fucking hate her. Man. Hate most of the people, most comedians. Look at Will Will Hussinger, dude. He's like too perfect. What the fuck is his problem? Exactly. It's like six five, purple belt in jujitsu, great credit. Great job. What a fucking piece of shit. Hate that fucking guy. I like the lose these guys, but I like Gizmo and his buddy. Just for some losers. No fucking no like uh what's the word? Where you like pursue things in life. What's the word I'm looking for? Like no ambition, yeah. Just do shitty shows forever. 
<laughs> not like Will Huntsinger. Like he's actually trying to be a headliner. Like he's got a plan. He gets pissed off when he doesn't do well. You guys don't give a fuck. Just get drunk and uh, fuck hookers, right? You know, and take care of your herpes medication. <laughs> you guys can look a lot of fun. Seriously, I hate you just as much. So you can look in as much as you want. You know, go fuck yourself. You're a dumb fuck and probably a lesbian. Gives a fuck. O'Shea, this is really good that you always get the guy who laughs at everything. Like, I'm pretty much laughing at everything because it's cringy and awkward, and I'm, like, feeling your pain. But this guy, like, you, who's that guy you take with you to every venue that just laughs at everything? That's that's the best effect. That'll always work in any room. You know that guy? Uh, not really. I mean, he's a, I see him around. He goes to open mics and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, Ryan O'Shea is fucking funny. Yeah, what, 30 seconds? <laughs> what? You're so disappointed. You're blushing. What are you blushing for? <laughs> this guy's cool. This chick's cool. You guys are all right. You have good sex, smoke good weed. She doesn't cook. She, she can't cook for shit, but whatever. First of all, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry I, I'm very judgmental. Very judgmental. <laughs> I think I had fun. I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. I think this is basically over, but God, what are you looking at? You're so angry. Like, what is your deal? Is your father? Like, what is your God, I hate you. All right, I'll see you guys later. Yeah. Make some noise for Brian O'Shea. Or don't. He doesn't give a shit. All right. I've seen this man we started doing comedy together around the same time. Hell yeah. So Brian O'Shea, like when do you start doing comedy? Because I heard that guy talking about people starting comedy. Like when do you start? Well the thing of it is the guy that I was battling against, he went up and did worse way worse than me. He got he didn't even have a one dude laughing hysterically in the background. He had nothing for five minutes, but the crowd chose him because, because the crowd hated me. So <laughs> right. he gave up like after his set of him just completely bombing, they fucking go, well, who do you like? And then they completely lost their minds and cheered for him when it came time to vote. And then I got paid twenty bucks and left. And they didn't factor in the guy who laughs at everything? Right. They didn't factor him in. Because the guy had been leaning to me. He goes, you're still going to lose. I go, I know. Because there was complete silence for the other guy. I should have filmed it. All right. Do you want to get back to your uh, police station video we never finished from yesterday where you're kind of talking the cops through this crazy idea you have that we have rights and freedoms and can travel freely? And then they try to let you know, no, Brian, you're kind of in views there's like a state of and there's code and you got to follow it because everyone else does we get back to that we never finished it yeah oh wait you know what let's get to the castro update first let's get to castro because i think folks really want that like that's what i'm getting the vibe i'm getting they want another castro whispering in jail he's up to fifty thousand now somewhere around that but he's not done yet all right we need more uh contributions for the activism fund okay so we're gonna get an update from him find out what's going on there find out how bad the prison's doing while he like cries at court and says he's really sorry then hops on the phone to brian and goes it's really bad here brian you're like you're telling us what to do they're making us sleep on bunks it's craziness April 8th, 2024. My name is Chili DeCastro. I am a journalist who has been jailed for filming a cop. I did have a good day in court, and I was sentenced to six months in jail. I is that you, Emmanuel? Yes, sir. All right. I have not broken the law. I've committed no criminal or malicious acts. I'm an innocent man in the Clark County Detention Center for being a journalist. So with that being said, what's upcoming right now on Wednesday, the 10th of April, is an appeal bond hearing 
to see if I can be released on appeal on, uh, while I appeal the case to the Nevada State Supreme Court. I think that the case most definitely will be overturned. As you have seen, uh, Brian from Here's the Deal has broken down my video evidence, and I definitely backed up. I'm not guilty of obstruction, but I wanted to talk today about the reasons why I should be released on appeal bond. So I wrote down 15 reasons, and I'll just list them to you guys so that you guys can... Yeah, he started off this whole interaction as a constitutional law scholar. Once he gets put in jail, he all of a sudden becomes a journalist now. This guy's got a lot of titles and hats there wearing all at once. Nope. I'm not actually doing a live stream or talking to Brian from the phone. This is a journalism report, okay? I'm pretty much Walter Cronkite at this point. I can have an understanding of what my lawyer... You just don't get it. They're not learning and they don't get it. This is not re-adjudicating the case about whether or not I backed up or whether or not I obstructed. This is about whether or not I'm worthy to be released on an appeal bond while my case is being appealed. And that appeal bond is going to cost between... Ten and twenty thousand dollars. So, why do you want that, you punk ass bitch? When they fucking dude, I was. You don't think I was scared and didn't want to go to jail when they told me like way back over a decade ago, you're going to jail to do a hundred days. You're doing five months. So when it's all said and done, about a hundred days. They go, do you want a fucking appeal bond or you want to play these games where you run around town and then you can come back like two weeks or five months from now? And I go, no, we're starting today. Let's go. I want to get it over with. If you're going to do the time, do the time. Why are you taking 20000 of these people's money and putting it on you being let out only to have to go back and serve the time? You're that fucking scared to just sit there and get it over with? You're going to run from the inevitable? I just don't get it. And I don't get why anybody supports this crap. I'm not hating. I'm not bitter. I'm not jealous. Well, I am a bit bitter, I guess. I, that is part of my like online persona potentially part of my offline persona, but that's only because if it is true, we're living in slavery and genocide and I got to get over that. Okay. It's part of why we're here. So my mistake, but when it comes to this stuff, it's just like, man, there's an ass for every seat. Like, uh, Mr. Carney said, who's the guy who, who said that, uh, no matter one of the famous, uh, carnival barkers, right? there's an ass for every seat. So just give them, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, a hundred, you know, we're running the bag up. So we can continue to feed into the legal process and then be duplicitous and say, I'm crying. Please have mercy on me. Let me go. Okay. I'm in the cell now. I'm a journalist. Uh, you know, I need 30 K for appeal bond so that I go back and do the time anyway. It's just, I, I just don't get it. You, you, you're not going to do this game in this walk and expect not to do time at some point. And when you do wasting everybody's money to play lawyer games and appeal bond games is probably not the way to go doesn't really get you any respect uh as humbly as i can ask please go to my gofundme and if you can put in five or ten bucks i really appreciate it i'm not doing it my website was i'm not doing it i'm not encouraging anyone else to do it to be hank with you to be frank i probably wouldn't encourage folks to do it with me so i'm not going to do it with you you guys can say whatever the fuck you want i've been arrested over and over again at times no, this audience never heard me come out and say, please give me GoFundMe and give me shit. Did they do it on the strength of, of, of who and what we are and what we do? Yeah. But I didn't come out and beg for it and ask for it. You do what the fuck you do. Whatever's meant for you shows up. If not, then you ride for the cost. That's how that works. So I'm not giving you shit. I'm not giving anyone anything because I'm not asking for it if it happens to me because we do what's true and what's right because it's true and what's right. And part of doing what's true and what's right is accepting the consequences that sometimes you may get killed or put in a box. You know, the Christed being didn't come out of the fucking hole and then, ha you know, months or years later, whatever the timeline is, really doesn't matter. Have a cross built for him that he had to carry and go sit on. Right. He didn't come out in between those times and say, hey, could you hit the GoFundMe and cash app? Hey, could you like put some fishes in my basket? You know, he goes, no, I'm doing what's true and what's right because it's true and what's right. I got my own conscience and self-respect and integrity. I'm riding on that with the Holy Spirit. Whatever is going to happen is going to happen. That's true faith. You folks don't have that. And it's sickening. You're, you're already up to almost 50,000. You're going to keep begging people online every fucking couple days for more, 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 more for you to do less, 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 or for you to do too much extra. I just don't get it. I don't get how you guys have the fucking balls to show up and do this shit year after year. 
right? With all with all the simulation in play and all the consequences and sacrifice and where this all goes and what this historically means, the implications. I can't believe you guys have the balls to do this. It's like you just don't give a fuck about your legacy and your integrity and your reputation and credibility. You really just don't. It's really just all about your ass and your comfort, huh? Been days now, so I haven't sold any products. Uh, I fuck you. The hoodies to fifty dollars. You can get them. Like sick of you, motherfuckers! Now. I'm sick of all you inauthentic corporate beta male motherfuckers who act like we give a fuck about you not being able to sell products. That means you suck or your product sucks. Because if you didn't suck and your product didn't suck, you could be in jail or in a fucking hole and your product's going to sell more than ever. Go ask Michael Jackson what his last album did the day he fucking died. Are you retarded? You, yeah, I'm sorry. Rhetorical question. You must be fucking retarded. JG, your thoughts? Heat wave. Heat wave. Okay. I'm riding with that. Trying to make sure I have enough money for the appeal bond. Eat my ass. How about that? Why don't you come eat my ass and I'll see how much I can pay you for your appeal bond? I can't even get through this fucking. This is like the same. This is like the last time I did this. I can't even fucking get through it because I can't stand the sound of you motherfuckers' voices. I can't stand your fucking spirit and your intention and motivation and ambition and what it's geared toward. And I can't stand your unreconciled, dissolute nature and the cause and effect and your lack of results. It's pathetic and embarrassing. You folks never had a daddy, obviously, because you don't know enough to be guilty or ashamed when you're supposed to be. You never had a daddy to tell you, no, 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 Junior, that's not what we're supposed to do as men in life. Too busy with an inauthentic corporate male daddy, just like you running around town looking for money and pussy uh, and victimhood status. All the aggrieved lost souls. I have no criminal record. I'm going to go hit the reefer and run a play because I'm not going to be able to get through. There's no criminality in my past. So that's the first one. Number two, on this case, there's no victim. There's no damages. There's no restitution due. Uh, number three, I've been jailed for almost a month and there is no victim of a crime. I'm a journalist. So number four, my specific job is to be a First Amendment auditor. I do on-the-street reporting. I have regular face-to-face -face interactions with the police, so they're going to call it police touches. Well, I have them week in and week out. Number five, I had six full-time employees, and now I have five. I had to let one go last week, and I'll have to let another one go this week if my website doesn't get back online. So my life and my company and my business should not be destroyed over a first-time misdemeanor. Number six, the DA asked for a suspended sentence because I have no criminal record and this is a first time offense. Number seven, I have no history of violence in my past of any kind ever. There's been no 911 calls on me. There's been no hospital bills. I've never hurt anybody ever. Number eight, my, my entire family lives here in Las Vegas. I have deep ties to the community where I also assist in coaching youth. Where do you do this at, bro? Seriously, I just came back in. I just hit the reefer and came back in, and it's still your same bullshit. So I feel like I got to talk about it. Imagine Tupac going to court, yelling thug life, and then two weeks into the sentence going, I haven't sold an album, guys. I need fucking GoFundMe, guys. No, he didn't do that. Jesus didn't do that. Tupac didn't do that. Nobody really done that. Except you. People like you, I guess. Great stuff. Another silver ride. Like, imagine Malcolm X. <laughs> <laughs> like they put him in prison. He's crying about not selling products as an activist. You guys are the biggest punk fucking bitch liars I've ever seen. I'm sorry. I wish it was different because I'm burning all my bridges rather quickly in this fucking game. And I don't care. See, that's the consciousness of someone who's really riding on something. Don't give a fuck about what you all like and don't like. I'm more interested in the facts of the matter and the truth and what the character indicates. That's what I contend you need to be like. See, I'm one of those guys. I'm one of those, I'm that way because I got to be. That means you are that way because you got to be because there's no difference between us. It's not this like insanely high standard or bravery or courage. It's really just being a fucking man. Downsize like I told you two years ago, DeCastro, when you were giggling and laughing on here and I told you, bro, why do you got four and five million dollar places that you all don't own? You're indebted to. How are you going to be an activist and stand for rights and freedoms or also just be a philosophical, spiritual man on any kind of process and have millions of dollars worth of properties you don't own? It doesn't work that way. It's easier for 
a, a, a camel to get through the eye of a needle than a rich man to get into heaven. Isn't that what it says? Doesn't mean you can't be rich in spirit. Doesn't mean you can't have nice things. Your things can't own you fuck face. So when you talk rights and freedoms and constitution and activism and upholding the law and going to jail or dying, which is part of it, there's no crying and whining in that process. It means put up or shut up. It's the same thing as joining a gang. We're going to push this product. We're going to shoot at the people who shoot at us from the other side of town when they come over here. And when it's time to go to prison, buck up. That's what you lived your whole life for to get ready for. I'm not saying to live like that when it comes to gangbanging and that crap. I'm just saying it's the same sentiment. There's nobody in that game who's pushing product and shooting when they're getting shot at who doesn't expect to do time. And when they go, it's almost a badge of honor. It's like, yeah, I live this way because it's real to me. I have a conviction and I'm willing to die or go to prison for it. What do you think about that? And nothing else has to be said. If you're going to do that for colors and blocks and product and bullshit, you probably should be doing that double time for what's true and what's right and the law of this land. There's no crying in that. There's no whining in that. If you want to cry and whine in that, you do it on your pillow at night when nobody's watching and listening. You do that with God and your, your own conscience, right? So we don't get into this game of life, let alone rights, freedom, principles, spiritual faith, and expect not to suffer and die. That should be expected. What you're going to do from now until then is going to define you on some level. This ain't it, bro. And again, I may have to get shown something. You know, maybe this is going to have to happen to me and then I'll be in there doing the same shit. And then you can all do the, well, Paulie boy, remember when you said, and now you're doing this and maybe you got to humble yourself. But I'm just saying I've been there before and it didn't occur to me. And I, I want to believe it's because I have some level of faith and integrity. Maybe I'm just that narcissistic and egotistical that I want to cry and whine and I want to reach out when I go to jail, but I don't because of how it's going to make me look or how I'm going to be seen. I really don't think so. It just doesn't occur to me. I go, I'm not, I go, if anything, I'm thankful and grateful for the audience and the support and the community and all the rest of it. I don't sit there figuring out how I'm going to use them more to get out of what the fuck I've created that literally made me on the world stage or in the eyes of God. You could, you could argue both. So yeah, I don't know. I guess take, take that for what it's worth. Do something with that. I'm trying to help you. I'm really not trying to disparage you or demean you. Um, I just think that you've demeaned yourself in this path and this walk by clutching for worldly shit that you got to give up in order to be given everything back. This ain't the way. Well, who am I, right? Youth wrestlers. Number nine. As a First Amendment auditor, I have over 500 face-to-face -face interactions with police in over 20 states. So this is what I do. Number 10, I have a warrant in Ohio for trespassing during a peaceful protest. However, I ran out of money when in Ohio. I had to leave and come back to Vegas. However, bro, I got it. We got to go again now. You don't run out of money standing for rights and freedoms. I didn't have shit. Like, like, like I had about 10 to 20 stacks put to the side. You could argue for savings that, you know, I was living off of whatever weekly minimal, but I didn't, that's not what this is about, right? Like you could always do what's true and what's right and uphold God's law with the word of truth. It doesn't cost a motherfucking thing. If you need money to do what's true and what's right, you're working for the other side. Hello, holler if you hear me. One has nothing to do with the other. You may get benefits and privileges and value come through for doing that and standing on that, but one is not necessarily um, indicative of the other, right? Like it, it may make you as a value or a value system, but you're not necessarily entitled to that. So you're entitled by God to uphold the law and do what's true and what's right. If value comes from that in and of the world, all the better for you. If not, you don't stop. That's what defines you and gives you your truest resource and value. If you stop that, well, then you got to start doing this. Grifting, fraud, and begging, right? And you don't even beg right. This is why I say these folks don't pimp right and they don't hoe right. You folks don't even beg right. You pop shit. You act like you're the man. You're running around with all this fucking value, living beyond your means. As soon as the story gets real, now you want to cry in your fucking milk. The time to beg was before. Like, like, like the other folks you all want to shit on around here, who at least at some level, you know, they just beg when, when times of peace. So that in times of war and, and 
you know, disenchantment come, I guess there's a war chest there or something you can lean on. You know, sell some more trifolds in times of peace. I don't know what to tell you. You know, like, what would you guys have done if we went back a thousand years ago and a phone didn't exist and media didn't exist? You're going to sit in a box and cry and whisper and, and get a carrier pigeon to take you a fucking paper to Brian to tell the rest of us what the fuck you want and need? Like, we're not all in the same boat. I just don't like, this is why you, I know you guys are predatory because you're not even standing for rights, freedom, and principles, sp spiritual faith with a true intention. And you know, the audience is never going to do it. The majority are cowardly, bitch ass, dumb down chimpanzee audience. You know, they're never going to do it. So you can only hope that you pretend to do it on screen and they pay you to be the actor so they can live through you to not generate a result because that's all that's going on here. It's one big LARPing fucking drama soap opera session with all you folks. You're not really living the truth of the information. I know it because I am and you're not. You can't speak it. You don't even understand it. If you don't understand it and you can't communicate it and you don't have the experience and the result to back it up, you're not living it. You just want the audience to believe you're living it so you can profit off of it. So they can pay you to live through you for what you're not doing. It's beyond fucking deplorable if you really want to get down to it. Because you know in your heart you're really not that. You know in your heart you're really not living it. You know in your heart when it gets really real and the challenges and tests come, you fold and act like a bitch and don't stand for nothing. What's the difference between you and Donnie Trump and Joey and the rest of them? Bunch of punk-ass cowards in their little outfits, living beyond their means. And when the time comes to nut up and be a man, they all run for their attorneys. They all run for their fucking, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 condos, you know, and their, their, their reclusive states of beingness. They never fucking stand on anything. They never come in front of the whole world and say, I'll throw my whole fucking legacy away and all my property and everything to do what's true and what's right. No, you just all fold like cheap card tables, just like Donnie up there with a face cover and talking about warp speed and everybody. You're all the same. They're in it and of it. Babylonian trash. Let's just call it what it is. And they all live like there's not going to be some ultimate judgment here or, 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 or correlation or convalescence. It is. It's coming to a head. It's all coming into one moment and one experience and one world order. Get a fucking clue. I'm going to cry about it. They're going to cry about it before they get fucking sent to their maker on the cross. I've hired an attorney in Ohio and we're finally getting that warrant in Ohio handled. Number 11. Shut up, you fucking slave. In Good Springs, a hearing in Good Springs, Nevada for a U-turn ticket. The ticket was retaliated. Yeah, you know what you do? You, you don't present there. If you do present there, you show up for special presentment and you tell them, this is who and what I am and what I'm not, and I'm not presenting next time. I will not be here on the next date that you set. I'm giving you adequate notice right now, and you go out your fucking life sitting there arguing with their fucking bullshit paperwork, only giving legitimacy to it, proving you believe in it because you're fighting with it and arguing with it. You're trying to intercourse with an entity that doesn't exist and a whole bunch of actors going off a script that can't be proven to be real and true. You're a dunce. You're living in a fucking that. hallucination and you don't get it. Go ahead. He should have done that from the beginning is my, you know, my ultimate answer to all that. It's like, why would you even go into these venues and play these people's games? What point are you trying to prove? You should have honorably settled that outside of court. There was no need to go up in there with your representative or your attorney or your it's just it's crazy he set himself up for that he's gonna have to eat if that. you're are you at the bowling alley waxing the lanes uh no i don't think so that's not me oh that's that's yeah it's aaron i thought maybe you were working on the clock like waxing the lanes while we were broadcasting <laughs> no no i'm home <laughs> <laughs> fucking aaron um yeah it's it's you know when you start to see how this is all working for what it is, like despite what we believe it is or we've been taught to believe it is, you start to realize it seems a lot more of, of the cause and effect and why things are the way they are. You know, and it all just comes down to conscious and awareness. Big surprise, huh? The more unconscious and unaware you are, the more likely you are to be caught up in someone else's illusion or delusion and claiming to be on the right side when you don't know up from down, left from right. This is the inversion land. First Amendment rights with the police. I've already paid the fee to fight the ticket. 
You don't want to argue First Amendment rights with the police. You don't have any. You have natural rights from God. You're not a party to that constitution. At best, you can use it to bind them because they swear to it. You can't claim access to the rights that are in there because you didn't sign the document and you're not named in the document. You don't need to be because in the document that binds them, it says we get our rights from the creator God, dummy. So keep arguing civil rights and it just proves you're a civilian. It proves you're part of the civilian cult and it proves you're in a militarized structure and hierarchy, body politic, and you don't know it. And you don't wish to know it because you think it's sobs it mumbo jumbo. It's not. It's chain of title. It's command. That happens on August 20th. Um, command August input slash dot dot slavery. But the I'm going to have to start uh, speaking code like, bot, like, like well, robot language to these humans. I don't understand the common sense. People who I regularly teach to be nonviolent. Who are you teaching? Who are you teaching and what are you teaching? Every dunce out here who has a feeling and a thought thinks they're a fucking teacher but can't live the information. You know how many people I meet? They claim to be counselors, psychologists, teachers, whoever, whatever. And they just completely neglect the idea that to do what they do, they have to be mind and heart controlled. You're in and of the matrix and a system. Just like the guy who told me, I'm in an intel. Intel short for intelligence. If you don't have godly supernatural intelligence, you're not actually an intel. You're just exchanging information with other dunces who can't actually perceive properly. Okay, so what are you teaching when you don't even understand the foundations of philosophy and law? Teaching other people to be mind and heart control followers and repeaters and parrots like you? Not know how to think? Just keep repeating what to think but not know how to think? What, are you going to spit back some kind of code and Supreme Court decision to a guy who's already got you pimped? Right, to assembly, speech, petition, and press. And number 13, I am innocent until proven guilty because I have another upcoming case on May 1st in Las Vegas for obstructing. And I'm not guilty of that case just because I've been charged. They brought it up as though, oh, he has another case coming up. Well, I'm innocent. Yeah, they're establishing a pattern of behavior that you have a pattern of behavior of running around interfering with policy enforcement uh ensuring contracts of surety with legal entities so they've got you pimped because they created an ai overlay they taught everyone to believe in it and you can't interfere with someone else's belief even if you happen to know it to be wrong and untrue you can't interfere with it nor can you interfere with the contractual obligations so they're establishing a pattern of behavior and credibility mr de castro says he wants to get arrested to boost his youtube channel Mr. DeCastro says his YouTube channel is all about making money. Mr. DeCastro regularly interferes with contractual obligations of policy enforcement and policy uh, followers who are all contracted as legal entities who've, who've neglected their natural rights for benefits and privileges. They, From their perspective in their system, you have no business doing what you're doing. And they don't believe it's for honorable reasons and good intention. They believe you want to be a carnival barker and you want to get attention and you want to use the system and the quote unquote injustice in order to make a name for yourself so you can be known and get paid. And I happen to pretty much see exactly what the fuck they're saying. Whether I accept what should be done to you by their standards or not, I don't think anyone should be put in a box who hasn't caused loss, injury, and harm. With that said, the God of this world does because it loves fucking with you. It loves checking your bitch-ass ego. It loves getting you back under the God of creation, mirroring to you who and what you think you are. And it's working perfectly. It's funny, from my he, estimation. He charged forward waging war, and now he wants to run back waving the white flag. It's like, bro, you, you know... You became their combatant and built yourself their dossier against against yourself from the beginning by doing what you were doing. So now you're gonna have right. To you got two out. options now. Either it's name, rank, and serial number. Kill me quickly so I can get on to my next experience, my next metaphysical incarnation, or I will learn to serve the God of Creation while being a political prisoner of your little worldly group here. There's nothing stopping you from bear witness and testimony and becoming a servant of the Most High in anybody's custody. I would know. 
but you're not interested in that because you don't have a servant's heart. You have an infidel's heart. You're greedy. You're lustful. You're desirous. You want more, 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 and you keep doing less, 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 or you do too much for everyone's own good. How about just doing what's true and what's right and what's necessary? Pour and then stop pouring. Go ahead, Aaron. I saw you leaning in there. Did you have anything or were you just kind of, okay. All right, let me get back to it. Let's finish it up here. Until proven guilty. So it doesn't matter if I've been charged with something. I've been charged with things lots of times in my life, but I don't have a criminal record besides when I was a teenager. So those are the reasons why I believe that the appeal bond should be approved on Wednesday at 9 a.m. in the Justice Court in front of Judge Levitt. People are asking uh, what the hang-up is on putting money on your account, like for buying you a, a meal or whatever. Right now, apparently on their website, they're saying that they can't accept that right now. So I was put in the hole for live streaming a phone call with another journalist named Brian from Here's the Deal. And it doesn't say in the, what the CCTV fuck did he think was going to happen? Live streaming. It says no third party calls and it says no misuse of the phone. But I'm not a psychic reader. And with all respect to the guards and to the staff here, you just I don't get it to Castro. You still just don't get it. That it's not about what you decide it is. And if it is, well, then ride on that. Stop whining. They don't consider you to be a journalist, they consider you to be property of the state of Nevada. You know why? Because you want to keep putting yourself in the legal person jurisdiction and you want to keep signing bonds and going into bondage and human trafficking. Like the beginning of time. You want to go into the court, which is a church, right? And you want to do trading in the souls of man by doing bondage. Whose fault is that? Spiritually. That you want to keep paying and giving them uh, death notes well, non-money, non-lawful living money, so you can fucking bond deeper with them and be under performance bond and obligation of shaitan. You're no different than the folks the Christ did being took the whip out on. You're at court, which is synonymous with church because they used to happen in the same building and they mean one and the same in etymological terms. You're in the court, which is the church, trading your own soul for fiat currency and calling it a bond, which is bondage. And I'm supposed to feel bad about you getting slaved by the devil, your daddy? No, I'm not. I'm not the God of creation on the highest level. I might be here. I'm an incarnation and I'm subject to the whims and rules uh, 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 of this game. Right. So it's either you're riding with the creator who brought you to the dance or you want to ride with man's law and legal system and all of its trading and bondage. In which case, you're subject to the devil and its whims. It's not going to give you safe passage. No, you're riding with the God of creation, what's true and what's right. You got a conviction in your heart and you're a man of faith. And I bet doors will open for you. If not, hell fire. That's what I've experienced. Can't tell you anything but my own experience. And I'm not a godly religious man, quote unquote. I, I wasn't me. I'm an East Mike. Coast New York gorilla with too big of an ego, as they say, for my own good. Boy, does that have to get checked and humbled at time by whatever this is. Conscience, I guess, locally, you could call it. In my in my experience, I've been able to walk amongst the most demonic people and and not be in harm's way because I know not to get in their way. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not there to interrupt whatever activity they got going on as long as I, I know I don't have to participate in that activity. And I've never found myself in harm's way being around or in the environment. Or in the I wish the Mr. DeCastro death. would. I'm listening to you, Emmanuel. I just, I, you know, you know me, bro. I'm chopping at the bit at times. I wish Mr. DeCastro would try to sue me and bring me to court with the performance he just put on there. Oh, we'll have some great fun. And it's <laughs> going to cost him a gang of fucking money, a big bag of money, and it's going to cost me absolutely nothing. Because my time, energy, attention, and my understanding, the knowledge itself is my greatest resource. I can spend that all day. See? So go ahead. We can do that. I, I gave someone critique about how I believe they should handle the situation and where they've gone wrong. They want to use the court to further ambulance chase and do malicious prosecution. Great. And you're going to watch me go in there and whoop him from one side to the other. I don't care what attorney he drags out there. I'm going to have my way with him, too. I'm going to sit him right down. I'm going to say, does this man have any firsthand knowledge of the events? No, then he can't speak. I don't care what you consider him representation or not. Mr. DeCastro has a perfect time speaking for himself everywhere else we're going to do it here today as well so swear him in okay it's going to be mono e mono we're going to level the playing field right because we're both men 
If not, you're going to put yourself in that other jurisdiction and I'm going to be the only sovereign at the court and I'm going to run rings around you and all the other actors there. And you're going to watch a king run a court and you're going to watch me put everyone in proper position. And you're going to watch me correct the record and the facts of the matter. And then you're going to watch some folks compensate for running their mouth because I would never be a vengeful retributive man, nor would I seek someone to be in prison. But, you know, since you're getting all this money and want to run your mouth, we can compete in the commercial realm and you can compensate since this is your business, right? I love it. I love when these folks claim to be all these things and then say they're going to take someone like me to court. I go, let's play. Hope you got, hope you got deep pockets. Did he say, oh shit. Did I mean, he say, did, did he say that he wanted to take you to court? No, the guy's Where saying that, that usually that you got to fix your mic because you're, you're buzzing. I don't know what that is, Aaron. I want to hear from you and speak with you, but it's going crazy. Um, yeah, again, he's just pointing out what seems to be a, a, a potential pattern, right, with Mr. DeCastro and others that when they don't get what they want or what they like, they try to use the system in order to equalize. But see, they can only do that with folks who are scared of that. I'm not scared of that. You don't have shit. Right. And, and again, you're not going to have access to my assets and the rest of it because I hold my property in trust. Right. Furthermore, even if there are certain assets that you'd be able to access or, or, or to claim or in quote unquote my name or in that personage, uh, you're going to have to substantiate who and what you are and how I've caused a detriment uh, to you. Right. So, again, you just if folks can say whatever they want. That shit doesn't scare someone like me because I understand proper process and procedure and I understand what it takes to have a case be considered legitimate. It's frivolous. You know? Nor is someone like you who has the record you have going to go up against someone like me with the record I have and be considered anything but dishonorable in bad faith. So you're probably going to lose before we ever start competing. The court's just going to look at you and what you do and how you live. They're going to look at me, what I do and how I live, and they're going to immediately determine that I'm way more good faith and honorable. And I have way more understanding and ability to communicate and amalgamate. Uh, I'm pretty much like God in that room to someone like you in their eyes they go they, like if you took me to court the uh, the people uh, the actors would be asking you why would you ever do this like they would turn to you at some point either at court or behind the scenes and go why would you ever take a being like this to court you'd have to be insane Yeah, it would be definitely super silly of him to take that to a claims court. I mean, it would just, it would be. Yeah, they got enough trouble upholding their own rights and the law rather than trying to drag the silver and gold tongue gorilla in for some frivolous charges that don't amount to anything. I might wind up owning your whole fucking estate. You want to play with me? You want to dishonor at the court? See, I take dishonor very seriously, right? So like. It's not about ego. You want to go to the court and lie and play games? I'm going to get you on record, and then I'm going to tell administrator. I'm going to say, I don't seek anything. Administrator, I'm going to let you decide what this person needs as far as punitive damages and compensation. I just turn it right over to them. Soon as I'm done running court, I confer jurisdiction right back to them. I don't want anything done. I'm not even claiming I need a dollar. I'm going to let this third-party impartial administrator uh, decide what he thinks is appropriate. And he's going to take everything you have and give it to me. Everything he's legally able, because you want to play in that realm, in that game, I don't. I'm going to keep myself right out of that jurisdiction. And then at the last moment, I'll confer with them. Jurisdiction. Once I have you beat, and then they're going to decide based on honorability and you having an ego problem, that Paulie boy is going to get three quarters of your shit. Whatever the maximum is. Because obviously they can't just put you into ruination and put you out in the street. So there's going to be guidelines and maximum. And I mean, if I really want to, I could just appeal to. I wouldn't because it would just prove that I'm like you and that I'm willing to play games. I'm not. I just put the clear facts and record on the matter. I don't build it up. I don't minimize or maximize it. I don't claim the victim. I don't claim I've suffered. None of that. I just go, this is what it is. Now I step back, do what you please to get this person's ego in check. And, and it always comes through. That's how this universe works. Tell me your thoughts before we get back to the Castro. The Castro. Yeah, dude. Castro. Yeah, it's, it's fucking hilarious, man. It's like, uh, could you, you know why? You know why these folks would never take you or somebody else that's fucking awake? Why is that? You know, we never see that. 
Why is it there's never any public cases with a man that's fucking awake? I wonder. They don't want it. They don't want it. The courts don't want it. The state of doesn't want it. That's just my opinion. They don't want it. We never see any of these motherfuckers actually, the ones that actually get it. There's never any public hearing live, live with a, with a trial by jury or with a fucking type, quote unquote magistrate. That's indicative of something, right? Yeah, I mean, most of the time, if these folks can't set you up to be your own worst enemy, they're going to try to make an ally out of you because they already know you see what they're doing and not doing. That's why a lot of these grifters and frauds came to get me. I thought it was because they wanted to share this truth and rights with the audience. No, they came and got me before I could come and get them. <laughs> they go, we better keep our enemy close, right? Because this motherfucker can see and he knows what we know and he's willing to act on it we're not so if you're living a lie you you almost have to ingratiate yourself uh, and align with the folks living the truth or speaking it because if not at some point it's only going to be a matter of time before your time comes on that carpet and the light gets put on you right so now they're these guys are smart man i don't know if it's like them consciously doing it or it's a subconscious thing and they're spiritually avatar but they will put themselves in the room with me just so that when the day comes that I criticize them on their evil, they can always ride on, hey, Paulie Boy's just a disenchanted businessman. We got more numbers. We got more money. He's like poor and broke and doing a couple thousand at best over there. He's just a hater. You know, we had him in the room. We try to show him love. We try to give him an audience and we put him on and now he's breaking bad on us. No, that ain't what it is, bro. We're riding on principles or I'm breaking bad on anybody and everybody. I'm ABK. Anybody can get it. You've seen how I am with my father, my family, whoever, whatever. The truth is what matters. It's not about political appeal. It's not about business endeavors. It's not about affiliations. We're, 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 we're honorable, good faith men, first and foremost, or we're not. If we're not, I ain't dealing with you. I ain't working with you. And you should feel the same way about me if I'm not. That's called integrity and ethics and morality as far as I understand it. That's what makes a man a man. Man is judged by his principles and therefore who he will work with and not work with and for what reasons and intentions. I think everybody's potentially redeemable. I'll work with anybody if they'll work with the truth. If they deny the truth to go their own way with their own will, well, then they're ungodly. You do the will or your own will. I'm not interested in syncing up egos with you to fraud the audience or to pretend to be something that that, that time in the universe is only going to show something different to be true. You can't. Time is undefeated. You give people enough time in this realm, they're going to be shown who and what they are, despite what the fuck they've said and told. That includes me. So we're all subject to these same creational dynamics and understandings or lack thereof. And there's a cause and effect result. One of the results is the kingdom of heaven is few. The gate is narrow. That means when you have some discernment, beyond seemingly a lot of the rest, when you have some integrity and credibility and self-respect and ethic and morale, uh, you're not willing to trade that to be with the many. I'd rather be alone or with the few who live that life than trade that internal space for an external space of identifying with the many and the masses and the bigger opportunities and the more, more, more. No, less is more in this game, as far as I'm concerned. You just got to be a simple man. That's very complicated for all the inauthentic corporate males who are living a lie. Just being a simple man and living by the truth. And know that I can't live stream the call. Well, when I was put in the hole for seven days, I only served five, and then the hole got too full, so they let me out. And then they suspended my comments. Hold your hole back for there. Seven days. If you want to do anything for me, please donate to my GoFundMe. No, my I'm not doing it. Well, stop no. begging for money every five minutes. Get that appeal bond on Wednesday. We're not giving you shit. It's you embarrass the fucking truth community, which is, I'm not a part of it. I just came in here to bring the truth to a community that didn't want it, that called himself a truth community, and then I leave. I drop the truth on the table and I leave. Um, you embarrass the fucking legal, lawful community, the truth community, the Republicans, the Republicans, the Trumpers, the QP. You just embarrassed everybody and yourself. Right? If we're going to play the group consciousness game. We don't have to play it, but if we're going to, it's a fucking embarrassment. Stop begging for money. Money is not you guys' problem in this realm. Most of you well-to-do white people get a clue. Money's not your biggest problem here. It's your fucking ethic or lack thereof. Okay, let's go to the black community too. Money's not your biggest problem. I know you feel it is. A lot of you poor black folks No, ethic is your biggest fucking problem. 
See? See how the worlds collide? Because we're all one self and it's a human condition and dynamic. I could give you scum billions of dollars and you'd fuck it up and squander it and be back here begging because your ethic is off. Your discernment is off. Your appropriation is off. Your results are trash. That's why a motherfucker who, who's on a movement and has a vision can take nothing and turn it into something and do it over and over again. Abundance. You motherfuckers are in lack and loss. You want to claim success because you've had millions of dollars go through your hands and done nothing with it other than aggrandize yourself and your comfortable whole like lifestyle. Beyond embarrassing. And I don't know how long those GoFundMe's take to cash out. I don't. I don't know. But I'm. I'm just absolute. My anxiety. You know. Is, <laughs> you know. If I don't win that appeal bond, if we don't win the appeal bond on Wednesday. Then I'll be in jail until July, until the Nevada State Supreme Court hears the case, or until the writ of habeas corpus is fully heard. So I'm very, very nervous. And if you want to do anything, please just donate five or ten bucks. If, you know, whatever you have to donate, if you can. And I, I know you guys have put in so much. And I know that there's literally thousands, thousands. They're gonna of extort that money out of him while he's in there. He's such a piece of shit. He's already tripled his expectations of what he asked for originally, and it's still more, more, more. We want 15,000. All right, you got 45. Well, could you just more, more, more? And if, and if you just let him, it never ends. But hey, I'm all for it, man. There's an ass for every seat. We, I need it. We need content here, right? I could talk about something else. This is just as good as anything else. It's all relate. It's all relative. It's all related. You know, so I say give more. I say give him 10 million. I'm not hating. Give him 10 million. I want to see what the fuck he does with it, other than squander it all, pretend to give it away for activism funds. I get arrested over and over again. They never call me. They never send me shit. It just get me up there to be the content. Hey, Paulie, tell us about living the truth and upholding the law on the ground and going to jail over and over again while we sit in a condo that we're indebted to for the next 20 years worth 5 million and pass around hundreds of thousands of subscribers to sell products and trifold. Yeah, that's yeah. all I am. No, when they find out in there where he's at that he's got money coming in, they're gonna extort the shit out of him. Watch, he's gonna be crying in months. Well, I need to get out of here, man. They're taking all of my GoFundMe's and my cash apps. There's right? Could you believe this, bro? Like, we, like there's <laughs> folks back from the old neighborhood who probably come do a hit on you for like five, ten thousand. This guy's already up fifty, and he's scared to sit there for another ninety days. And if he's if if he's gonna, he needs like millions to do it. Right? This is yeah, the level of living beyond their means and entitlement. And just greed. Yeah, he don't understand. Phones get in there, and somebody's probably watching him crying right now. Ridiculous. Oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> just, we have no understanding from top to bottom of anything that's going on. You know, and then eventually, like I said from the beginning, if he keeps doing this over the next hundred days, some convict who's like waiting to go to court on a murder, who's being housed there, is going to wind up going up inside of him one way or the other. Because they're going to say, I'm sick of you whining and crying. I'm sick of your bitch ass shit. I just went on my phone and heard Paul on Slave do a rant about you and how fucking pathetic you are. So I know I'm not tripping. And he's going to go, give me your fucking sneakers and your fucking commissary. And I'm taking your cheeks because I'm tired of listening to you. I'm about to go do life. And you just got 50K for sitting here for 100 days. I wouldn't want to have to be in that position. I just keep my fucking mouth shut and do my time and figure out how to come out that motherfucker better than I went in. Real talk. I'm nervous. I'm, I'm definitely nervous. You know, I'm, I'm not sleeping very much. I'm sleeping, you know, a couple hours here, a couple hours there, and I keep waking up dreaming that my appeal bond went one way or the other, and I keep dreaming about my dog. And a very special friend to me, gave me a quote the other day and they said from Nelson Mandela when I left that jail Jesus I left behind Christ. all the bitterness resentment anger right there at those jail doors because if I had not left them behind there I would still be in prison today You're not and that's, Nelson, that's, you're my, uh, that's my mentality as well I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to leave all this behind I'm going to I'm going to forgive and I've needed to forgive some people for a long time because uh, I was holding on to grudges and I need to forgive some people and I need to move forward and I'm going to forgive this and I'm going to move forward and I'm going to work on getting that NRS code removed that puts people who have misdemeanors in lockdown for 20
23 hours in a solitary confinement cell. You get a bunk mate, but it's, it's hell. It's total hell. So that's what I'm going to work on getting done. I'm going to work on... Jail's not meant to be fun, to Castro. This bitter anger and resentment behind, right here at the doors, the moment they close behind me, and I'm free again. I get to hold my dog and wrestle with my nephews. And See, if you would stop trying to ride the fence and play ego games, you'd already reconciled the fact that you're going to have to do time in this, and you'd be figuring out how to be a trustee and serve the creator and be of service to your fellow man while you're there. You know, bring them some fucking food, clean the damn dorm, uh, teach them all the law you don't know and understand and can't apply, you know, shit like that. Right? Like, God forbid you motherfuckers stop clinging to that phone, hoping to be remembered by the outside world and your goofy audience. You're so desperate to still be seen and heard and just be remembered and known. I know, bro. I get it. We all get it. But then at some point, you got to check that shit and go, I'm just a man. I'm no bigger, better, important than anybody else. And if I'm here for what's true and what's right, then I just need to focus on that and becoming better and doing better and being a service to God and my fellow man while I'm here. Nah, you want to get on the phone every five minutes, crying and whining, make sure you're seen and heard, that you're remembered, that people are giving you shit and validating you. Cut the bullshit, bro. I sat in jail for 100 days. I told my father and everyone else, don't even fucking come up here. There's no point in even coming here. Don't call me. You can't call me anyway. I'm not calling you. We're going to get through it. You want to come up here on your own volition? Fine. I don't need it. Subject you to this crap. We already know what the fuck it is. I don't even want to look at you and hear it. I'm here. We're out at some point. We're going to do better and be better while we're here. We're not going to get in this fucking game of loss and lack and abandonment and validation and clutching and crying. Just cut it the fuck out, bro. If you had any kind of humbleness and humility and compassion in you, you'd look around at the motherfuckers who are in there who haven't been out in years, haven't left. Last time I was there, I shut my fucking mouth because I was there for traveling without a license and I was leaving. There was people there go, we've been here two years and we don't even have a date. Why are you crying? You got all the attention you needed. You fucking tripled up on this endeavor. You're going to get a big bag to sit there for 100 days and it's never enough on any level, huh? While the rest of these folks sit in there with families and children and rot, don't get a court date. Many of them there for fucking drugs or whatever because they're harming themselves. They're down and out. You don't have any of that. And instead of you being a fucking example of inspiration and motivation for them, you're bitching and whining and crying about what you haven't got yet when you've already got too much as far as I and others are concerned. Like little broken bitches and children. Grown fucking men. Twice my age, many of them. Almost. Instead of preparing to die, they're still clinging on to this world and what it has to offer them. And their fucking grandiose sense of self and ego. Have dinner with my family, you know? Yeah, but, because uh, that, that's my question is if you are innocent and you haven't created a victim, how many other people are locked up behind bars who haven't created victims? There are a lot. You don't of give a fuck right about them. Why are you acting like you do? Country that haven't committed a crime yet. They're behind bars. Yeah, you know, there are a lot of people in here who have completely victimless crimes. There's a guy less than 25 feet away from me. He's 20 feet away from me. He got pulled over and he had a blunt. He had this a, man played uh, with the hornet's nest and now he's crying that he got stung. He got pulled over. <laughs> he was completely bro. sober, but they confiscated the blunt and they gave him a DUI. And he's in here for DUI. There are about... 10 men in here for domestic right and the majority of them after a while are going to be done hearing you bitch and whine and complain because they're going to go you did what they don't understand what you're doing i could argue i don't i i do understand what you're doing i don't think you understand it and i know them people next to you don't they're going to go what i got dragged in here driving home from my slave job with a blunt behind my ear not doing nothing you're running up to cops putting cameras in their face and telling them what they're going to do and not do, they're going to think you're a fucking asshole. Especially if you keep whining and crying and complaining. You're going to wind up being hated in that place. You just don't understand inherent hierarchical power and value systems or tribal systems or really anything. You know? Instead of this motherfucker supposedly teaching everyone else how to get out of jail, he taught everyone how to go to jail harder and faster than ever before. 
and he's going to cry about it while he's there to a bunch of folks who don't give a fuck because they're in there for longer and for way less minding their own business and being slaved on. And once they hear you got 60,000 and you've been there two weeks, they're going to start looking at you as something to eat. This is what you all don't get. You better hope they keep you in that hole or in PC because if you start getting around some real motherfuckers who are hungry and inspired and don't really have as much ethic or morale as Pauly boy, they're going to start looking for what you can offer them, Talcott style. What do you have to offer me today? Because I had to listen to you bitching and complaining all fucking day, crying to your boyfriend, Brian, shaking on your bunk, and I haven't left in two years, and I'm hungry. Papa's hungry. Hey, yo, what do bunky. you have to offer me? Hey, yo, Bunky. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to come up off something, bro, because I'm tired of listening to you all day, every day. I'm tired of you sitting in here while I'm going broker making money. They don't even understand how jealousy and hate has two fucking sides to it. You're being jealous and greedy and selfish, and someone else in there is going to be the same way. And they're going to say, please donate to DeCastro's fund because we're going to clap his cheeks and take a third of his commissary every month. So please keep hitting the link. Big violence, and I've asked all of them what happened. Some of them said she called 911 and I went to jail. A couple of them told me she matched and she called 911 and I went to jail. One of them told me I smacked my wife. <laughs> so I don't endorse smacking your wife. That's for damn He sure. cracks up and at that. There are people in here who have. He just indicted in cases That have been in here for weeks and weeks and weeks. I don't know what the cash cow system is here. But I do wonder, I'm sure Brian can find out with the information. I wonder how much it is to put a person, a human being. I don't call these people inmates. I, don't, I call these people humans. I wonder how much it is to put a human in a bed. Not here just money, you ding dong. Yesterday in the Las Vegas Sun, there's a huge front page article that says the CCDC is not reporting deaths to the city council and to the commissioners like they're supposed to do. And there's no teeth to enforce the, the law that the, was passed at the legislature. So that's scary as hell. But um, I hope and pray that I'm, I can just survive this. Let's, let's just survive this and pray for Wednesday. And uh, Yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty shifty to me. I mean, there's no desire for accountability or transparency. Anything goes and the sky's the limit. And all you got to do is follow the money if there's a money trail and if they're hiding it that's this is why i don't trust none of you motherfuckers and i'm glad it always goes bad before it goes bad if that makes sense because it's not bad to me it's just words and then realizations it's, it's bad to you guys but i can't trust any of you motherfuckers because you're really not down this is what i mean like if i'm riding with the castro and brian or whoever else and we're traveling freely whatever it is as soon as they get knocked they're going to go to whining and crying and signing papers if they can get out of it that's who and what they are but you should hear them when they're in private conversation. Oh, they're the biggest, baddest guys. Paulie, you should do more. I go, I should do more? What are you doing? Oh, I'm at city council. I'm filming cops. I'm running for governor. I go, I think you're like, you want, you're desperate for attention and validation, and you're going to cause your own undoing, grasping for shit. That's not meant for you. It's not meant for me. I don't want it, right? So they just keep grasping in their ego, you know, and it undoes them every time. And rather than then humble themselves with humility to what the creational force wants of them, they just keep doing their own will, doubling and triple down on it. And I go, you guys are, are hilarious. How you pop all this shit in ego and then you cry and whine, you know? And then they wonder why I never really talk to them. I never answer back to them. I never really get that deep in with them personally because I already read them just like the creator, just like that judge on the bench read your heart, knows who and what you are, doesn't trust you. You know, you're, you're not, you, you can't even hoe right. If you were really who and what you were, you'd get all the way into that fear you live in as an infidel and you put the costume on and just be one of them. I think that's really what you want. I think you folks are really upset that you couldn't join the team and be one of them. They won't have you for whatever reasons, or you just can't not up to how you're going to look and be. So you try to ride the line. You try to pretend to be on some light side, you know, when really it's your will and your ego that's running the whole program, just like on their side. The difference is they have a reason. Again, we're back to folks who don't know themselves and can't govern themselves must be governed in the world some way, somehow. It's almost like a law, you know?
Your thoughts, Timmy? Any thoughts on on this this nonsensical yeah, I mean, dynamic of like spinning or spiraling or just pendulum swinging from one side of the black to the white and never seeing the gray area or middle ground? Yeah, I mean, I always like to go to the extreme and and find out what somebody really wants. So, you know, that's why I like to ask folks, well, what would you do if you were uh, the quote unquote God in this situation? What would you do if you get pressed into this situation? The guy's telling us he wants to be the governor, right? And so what, what would he do different, right? He wants to be the governor and then, and, and then do what? He's going he's gonna to have an honorable cop? He, what does he understand about honor? So, I mean, it seems like he just, would, he just wants to be the one with the power. These uh, folks are the tyrants they're complaining about and attempting to fight against while undoing themselves in their greatest power. So, uh, someone just said something that, oh yeah, broken system, broken trust. Showed me a video just yesterday. Apparently got a dismissal. They say it doesn't happen over here. It happens regularly. Why is DeCastro, why am I not selling trifolds is the question. When I'm constantly having folks come here and go, we do what you do. We learn from you about your experience. We apply it to our own self. We speak it. We live it. And then sometimes things go our way. And we didn't cost us money. We didn't have to hire anybody. No one spoke for us. They tried to clown us at court. They tried to say, Mr. Lanto, we don't understand what you're doing. It's kind of nonsense. It's kind of sob city. It's kind of, kind of, kind of whatever. You're not getting me off my square. I know you want to like get me an inferiority complex and you want to play superiority complex. You're inferior to me. You're a servant of me, not the other way around. I don't have to believe or understand what you say you do. This is my perspective. Like it or love it. So when you stand your fucking square and they know you got a conviction in your heart and you're not willing to play their bullshit games with bullshit rules that can't be understood even if you tried, it tends to be it works out at times a bit different than what you all expect. So if he's willing to come up here for Lauren De Lagoon and all the rest of the clowns and show us the latest dismissal video after weeks and months of them pretending he was an idiot, he didn't know what he was talking about, uh, why are you doing this? You're only going to make it harder on yourself. Then, just like the bullies in middle school who talk a whole bunch of shit at lunch, how they're going to knock you out and beat you up, by the time we get to the flagpole, they're never there. They're never there. They never want to show up and get their ass whooped in front of the whole school, right? Because they know they don't have it. It was all about bluff. It's all about put on. It's all about bravado for clout chasing. They really don't want to mix it up. They don't got the goods. If they did, they'd have just steamrolled you. They'd have just got you to plead out. They'd have just said you're guilty and gave you the 180. Why do they keep dismissing one after the next after the next of all the folks they say are so stupid, have no understanding, don't get results? They're the big bad power structure that can't be beaten turns out we don't need to beat them we just need to stop beating ourselves we just need to stop getting in our own way we just need to stop buying into delusions and false belief system that's pretty bad well, you know, I don't think that the guards are actually killing people um, because there's cameras on all the sergeants. So I don't think, I mean, I think the way people are dying is the lack of giving them their medication. I think that's the number one way people are dying in here. I think people are dying in here from heart attacks and strokes. Remember, when I came in, they checked my blood pressure. You guys all know I got my blood pressure down to 135 over 85 consistently, day in and day out. Sometimes it was 132. A couple times it was 120 over 85, over 82. I got my blood pressure down by exercise, cutting stall, quitting caffeine. Yeah, right. These folks don't understand. They never watched those movies of the guy that they would depict as the guru, non-guru, who could always speak the truth and reverse the dynamic on you and get out of it. You know those guys that they have like in those movies, you know, like they who can't get this guy pigeonholed and pinned down with our crap. So all you folks want to run into court and prove how you're competent. And then when they go, we're going to give you a psychological evaluation to prove that you're competent. And I go, oh, I don't want that. Well, why waste everyone's time? I'll tell you right now, I'm not competent in this venue. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a legal counsel. I'm not part of legal society. I'm far from competent in this venue. I don't need to compete with you. That's the best part about the law. I just need to know who and what I am and what I'm not. And who and what you are and what you're not. See? No competition necessary. Therefore, no necessity to find out if I'm competent. Because I'll already admit I'm not competent at legal process. 
and I'm not a part of the legal society. That should make it very simple on what we're going to do here today, right? If there's no loss, injury, and harm, if there's no valid claimant on the other side, if the charging instrument is that of a complaint from an entity, well, I can only do special presentment here today. I can't address the grievance. There is no grievance. And I'm not governed by statute, policy, and code. It's only given the force of law through the consent of the governed. Nowhere in this paperwork have you claimed that I consent to be governed by statute, policy, and code against my will to my own detriment. It's foolishness. Nothing to compete about. Why would I want to enter into a competition where I'm bound to lose? When if I just stay out of it, I win every time. Because I'm made in the image of the Most High and everything, including government and the court, extends off of me, man. It's created by me, man. It's staffed by me, man. He who creates controls. I'd rather retain the position of I am that am and therefore control the functionaries of the court then relinquish that original status standing in position and try to compete in a worldly venue with you on a field where I'm not trained. Only the dunce runs into court and then just shuffles to try to prove to all their mommies and daddies how they're competent with the legal system and legal process. Only the dunce in his ego does that. The idiot, the man of God outside of the professional world, seeks none of that. Only a fool would do that. Try to dance with the devil and not get burned. Here's a paper that you don't understand, Mr. Carini. Okay, I'll sign. Here, here's where you need to go. But I'm a man. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. Here's where you need to go in three days from now at 8 a.m., Mr. Carini. Okay. And then I show up. <laughs> it first at the door. I'm a man. Uh, open your butthole, sir. Okay, give us your uh, poo poos or pew pews. Okay, here, take all my uh, just un un you know dethrone me, depose me. Mr. Oh, I'm a man. Uh, could you please sign this paperwork, just letting the court go on record that you've been advised of your rights from our perspective? All right, let me just look at this. You just sign here that you accept our perspective of what your rights are and that you were informed. Yeah, let me just, look just at this double paper. down on reining uh, you in. Yeah, Timothy Carini in all capital letters. I'm going to pretend yeah. I know what that means. Uh, I give away uh, you understand all my what your rights. rights are as a legal person here today? Oh, wait. Sorry. Yeah. I wasn't supposed to throw that in. Could you just sign here? Just let us, just let the court know that we advised you of your rights that we apparently think we dispense or take away. Yeah, let me see what else it says. It says a uh, criminal complaint in all capital letters. So you guys are complaining. You know what? I just want to come in there and complain and argue and cry and just, you know, play victim. So I'm just going to sign everything, you know, whatever. But but I'm a man. I I'm a man. I right. I'm a big boy. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah, great. We got all we need here. Uh, we're going to appoint you a counsel now because you just kind of show that you're completely incompetent, but then want to compete in our system voluntarily. You're a special kind of stupid. And we like that here. It's very profitable for us. Yeah, I'm not saying anything because I can't speak anymore because I'm now dead at, at, in the court. Right. We don't recognize you anymore. Thanks for signing that paperwork. But this, this court-appointed <laughs> agent with conflict of interest who, of course, will defend you with a duty of the court no less than the client. Um, yeah, we're going to appoint him. Help you out. I mean, you, you can't do any worse than what you're already doing, giving all your natural rights away, claiming to be a legal person, saying you understand something even I don't understand. I only asked you to find out if you'd accept. It's like a pimp with a hoe. Hey, I'm going to tell you 10 bullshit things and ask you if you understand. If you say you understand something that can't be understood, I already know I got you. I'll tell you anything. Say the sky is green. Now what, hoe? Yes, it's green, daddy. Okay. It's exactly where we need to be to, get, to move forward in this endeavor, right? I need to rein you in. I need arraignment. But all that doesn't mean anything, Paul, because I, I was wrong. I just signed a bunch of shit and agreed to a bunch of stuff. But, you know, that doesn't matter. Mr. Carini, in this Washington, D.C. entity, non-entity based endeavor called the body politic, we have elected officials and legislature who make laws. Do you accept that? Um, I guess so, because I'm a citizen slave. Right, but I don't right. like it. So, Mr. Carini, you pay your slave taxes and vote and do all the necessary things to prove that you're part of the Bali politic and accept benefits and privileges and therefore need our protection? Well, personally, Your Honor, I don't like it, but I'm a slave taxpayer, and if I don't right, pay, you're going to throw me in jail. Are. I'm going to cry, you and are. you're going to throw me in jail. I'm in fear. Right. 
Well, because you know how to act, right? The government-sponsored school taught you how to act when you get in front of government. See how that works? Well, what else am working. I supposed it's to moving. do? What All else right. am I supposed to do? Yeah, I think we got what we need. I'm not even interested in what happens to Mr. Carini because we already got whatever we need. He's so broken and already submitted. He's pimped on. Why should we punish him double time? He's not a man. <laughs> 500 bucks sound good, Mr. Carini. Just have it to us by the end of the month. We'll leave you alone for, I don't know, a few weeks, few months. Who knows? Okay. Great. Great stuff. All right. Next yeah. case. Mm -hmm. I'm here at third party interview. <laughs> I'd like to know the facts. And I'd like to know who bonded. Sir, them. who are you? You have no standing in this case. I don't recognize you. Are you on this Bye. docket here? Are you Timmy A. Carini, all caps uh, entity? You're, You're not that I'm being, the, are you? You're not the legal counsel the, that being? Shut up part. now, slave. Sit down. <laughs> You're in this court. You will be put in contempt. I'm just dying and itching to slave up a second person here today because that just went so smoothly and so well. I kind of need to act out now. Will you please be the person that I get to act out on? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Lock him the fuck up because, you know, the Karini thing went so smooth and so well. And I feel like folks are really not in this room understanding the power that I wield. So in order for them to understand that, they're probably going to need to see a sacrifice up close and personal. Go ahead, uh, bailiff, Mr. Brian O'Shea, uh, my bailiff there. Please drag off Mr. Emmanuel in front of all the other slaves, horrified. I'll speak to him in like a couple minutes and let him out, but I want them to see this. Get over here, Emmanuel. Right. All right. Mr. Emmanuel has been dragged off into the back. Um, and that's good. That's good theatrics, right? For everyone else here witnessing. I'll be right back there in like five minutes to talk to him. I'll let him right out. We'll do the paperwork. You know, but you got to put on a performance here. It's, it's, it's about maintaining the position you know, and the power. Now, he, now here's me after that on my live stream. I didn't do anything wrong. I complained <laughs> to the judge and the judge complained to me. And then he said a bunch of mean stuff. And then forced me to pay five hundred dollars, or say I would be in contempt and be dragged away by some piss-smelling pig, and that's just <laughs> ridiculous. So Debbie, I'm just going to complain. Debbie, yeah, Debbie. Uh, some of our property is in the back, whining over the phone. Could you please have it restored uh, in the in the as it were hole, as they call it? Uh, just please have it stored there for its own safety, because see, the property we now have out back doesn't understand the dynamics of like law, order, legal society process, he it might get himself is. in trouble, might get himself harmed. The Constitution says something about this being not right. Oh, the Constitution outweighs my own discernment and my own contracts. Is oh. there scholarly property in the back whining? I love when scholarly property, Constitution scholar property whines like that. Some paper that I've never seen or, con or contracted myself or signed says that yeah, I have some right okay. I can't really live. Hey, Debbie, oh. uh, could you prepare the single cell in the dark for George Washington here, one of our founders, Mr. Mr. Scholar, constitutional Before scholar? I go, yeah, just get it donate warmed up to my, Donate to my GoFundMe, please. Somebody make a GoFundMe <laughs> immediately and hire more lawyers for me, please. Oh, man, yeah, please do donate, because we're going to make sure we take at least a third and a half of whatever he gets back to the system. So go ahead, please do that. Daddy I'm needs like, a new car this month. <laughs> I'm like Nelson Mandela. I've been in jail for 27 minutes, and then he was in jail for 27 years, but it's basically the same thing. Oh, more donations. Dude, we have the best racket going ever. Like, I just get my Jewish lawyer cousin, who also works for the court, to just come in here and defend, in quotes, Mr. DeCastro. And it's like another 20, 30 K. You know? I mean, hey, we got to do what we got to do crying tears of happiness they make it so easy for us you know the more they yeah. cry and whine and kick and scream and have no conviction the easier they make it for us to put them in dishonor and house them as property it's a really fun game huh like who needs call of duty when you got court every day all day mr decash will respawn after like a 180 he's coming back it's not going anywhere Anything that could be bad for me. I touched sugar the most I could. Of course, I failed with the cookies now and then. 
but I got my blood pressure all the way down. When I came in, my blood pressure was 190 over 110 again. But I'm sorry, I think it was 180 over one, over 100. Well, I'm sorry, sorry, it was 180 over 99. That's what my blood pressure was. Did you count it? <laughs> he was holding a little vein on his arm, counting the fucking pulses. Like, dude, imagine me morbidly obese, just giving my blood pressure rating over the phone at jail. It's never going to go well. I guess he can do that. He's fairly fit. Blood pressure reading. Sometimes I get a little confused. Though. And so the nurse looked at What her don't you get confused by? Exactly. She said, you have high blood pressure. I said, well, I used to. And then she said, well, that's not so bad considering the circumstances. And I, so then it just made me realize, you know that what you're doing to people stresses them out to stroke levels or heart attack levels. And for some reason, everybody here is okay with it. Everybody is okay. It's called fascism. Right. Now, I've okay. written out 25 pages by hand of my interpretation of segregation over incarceration because we spend $49 billion a year on incarceration and over 50% of people recidivate and come back to jail. Could you imagine? See, this is where it would like... It would serve us to practice stoicism rather than romanticism because, you know, in the world, it's viewed as from a stoic perspective that your reactions are within your power and choice. So your thoughts, your heart rate, you know, the stroke and the heart attack and all the rest of it on some level is within your own power <coughs> to reserve yourself and control yourself and compose yourself or to just feed into that fear. Right. So. Yeah, I would suggest if you're going to be doing time to start adopting more of a stoic approach than a romantic approach. The romanticism will get you in victim mode a lot of the time. You know, it's just not going to be beneficial for you. Whether you're right, wrong, or indifferent, it's just not a good perspective to take on to do what we do. It would seem to me. Imagine sending your dog to a dog training Charlie. school. And then Charlie the dog. Back and it bites even more people. And when people get out and they recidivate, what does that mean? That means that you, your family, your brother, your sister... You have one minute left. ...is a victim of the person... Wrap it up. I don't know if that's the proper pronunciation, but you know what I'm talking about. So I wrote a 25-page essay on it yesterday on, on segregation over incarceration, and it's very in-depth. I'm going to publish the book when I get out of here. I've taken hundreds of... of, of of perspectives that I think could make a system that doesn't have recidivation where, where there's no more victims of crime. And that's my overall goal. It's like all that, the 50 billion that all those corporations pay in taxes. I want to control that. I know better. Vote me for governor. Don't talk about how that, that taxes got collected. No, no, no. All you slaves have to still pay it. Right. They keep opting into and intercoursing with a system they keep complaining about, but by intercoursing and interacting with it, you're of it. Imagine the ditty parties the city would have if he became governor. He's, wait, 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 I just, I stepped out for a second and came back. I guess I heard it was over. I was listening like over the top. I didn't hear him say that. Is he begging for house arrest now? He's like, I'll do the time anywhere. Just, you know, as long as I don't have to be here, just bring me to my condo. Put the, put the thing on me, slave me from the condo so I can still broadcast and get my fundraiser money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they don't care. Why do you think they care? The whole point of being here is to is to learn how to not intercourse and interact with folks who don't care. The Tao tells you that. Don't live and work with men and women who don't care. Why do you keep going in there and arguing with them and crying about what you already know? They don't care. They don't I get locked up. Care. The truth is going to stand on its own. If I get locked up this morning, I'd be pretty tempted to put my hands on him. Will you rape him, Brian O'Shea? It'll it'll catapult your online career. It's going to be clout like you've never seen before. Like, imagine you get the Castro alone, you rape him, and then 
you 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 get him to like not tell the officials, but then you get him to admit that he was raped, but it wasn't rape. It was consensual. Like you know those black prison games they do where you like you go on camera with him with your arm around him and go, De Castro, tell him all about what happened last night. He goes, I was fucked consensually. It definitely wasn't rape. Right. See now you're exempt from legal prosecution at that point. Yeah, there's this uh, gangbanger from Chicago named Little Jay. He's a rapper from like O Block type shit. And when he went to prison, he there was rumors he was gay, but he had like these, like there was this effeminate dude. Like no, 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 that's not gay, bro. That's not gay. When you go to prison, there's no other women there. There's a different hierarchy there. So you have to fuck the bitches in that realm. That's not gay. Okay, this is what you need to understand about being right. a dog. Right, dog will hump the couch. Dog will hump another male. It's not gay. Right? right there's no like there's no romanticism there. You're not dating a man and going to like candlelight dinner in the cell. Some bitches gotta get fucked, male or female. It's just it's part of the order and hierarchy. Everyone knows that. Right. I want them to be like real effeminate. Or prance around and shit. Sit in my lap. Yeah, yeah like you fuck cool. him for power and for value. You don't fuck him because you're like into him. And want to like love them and date them. You go, hey, you're acting like a bitch around here. You're getting all this value and you got power because you got a platform. I need to fuck you so I can uh, use this power and this value for different causes, for kind of different like, outcomes. Kind of you're like raping serious? for God almost. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is the thing people are not getting. You're raping for the Lord. Sometimes you got to take power and control over worldly infidels for whom there is no salvation and set them right. Part of that is fucking them. Or righteous rape. Ooh, right. Child, things aren't going to get easier. So you guys all presume that the Christ did being when he wasn't locked up in prison wasn't fucking bitches. Right? He's like, hey, you're an infidel. You're a slave. Do what's true and what's right under God or you're getting fucked in here. And if Here's I can't fuck you directly, Shatan's gonna fuck you. Here's the thing. This motherfucker, dude, if I go in there and I get the same judge and the same charges, and I'm like, I'm gonna be like, you punk bitch. You fucked me over. You fuck face. Yeah, so fucking drop on your knees, ho. Fuck this dude, yeah. All right, the audience yeah. needs that. The audience needs to be vindicated and shown the truth. So if you have to fuck the Castro to show that audience that he is unrighteous, that's God's work. That's God's will. They'll stop giving all that blood money. They'll stop giving their time, energy, attention. They'll stop being parasited off of, and they'll stop being misled. All because you decided to fuck him like the bitch that he is. Fuck me. I fuck you. For the Lord. Yeah. Make him grow out his hair too and put his pants below his ass. So we know. I'll be sure to do that. Like, All yeah, right, let's like go to the police years. station with Brian O'Shea from yesterday. We never finished. Brian O'Shea at the police station talking about right to travel, and these guys can't figure out what the fuck he's saying and how that would work. It's just too, it's too crazy. What? You're going to wake up every day and not consult the government moving around the world? Oh, that's craziness. Really scary sounding. A box that's tons and tons of weight with hundreds of pe 150 people on it. You know, there could be liabilities or insurance and, and regulations and maybe some sort of licensing could be. Go to court when they pay their fines. They're acknowledging the part of the public commerce system, which is commerce, which is the whole reason for this thing is, is dealing with commerce, right? People making money, people hauling things. Maybe you got a big, heavy now, that could be an argument that I could get along with. If someone's got a ginormous heavy piece of equipment, you know, going up and down these hills, and it, maybe it's filled with people. Maybe it's a bus that's tons and tons of weight with hundreds of people, 150 people on it. You know, there could be liabilities or insurance and, and regulations and maybe some sort of licensing could be needed, right? But if we're going to, you know, take it back, toaster, washing machine, bandsaw, horse, automobile, different pieces of property, which ones require licensing, which ones don't, which one requires numbers on them, which ones don't. Um, and, and it's getting back to, you have so many other people 
that go along or that that voluntarily because it's all voluntary at the end of the day when you guys ask people do you understand do you understand and you commit supply do you commit um, submit comply obey are you going to submit comply and obey to the officers when, when they do that they're acknowledging that they're going to that they're being part of your public system right when they do these things they're do you, when you say do you understand do you understand why i pulled you over we want to make sure they actually understand the reason we stopped them. Right, right, right. Right, but it's a, it's a, it's a key phrase. I don't even know if it comes up. I was the reason I'm hammering on that word. Understand is because I've been through, you know, I've, I haven't presented IDs, right? So I'm very familiar. You know, I've had my car towed. I've been arrested yeah. for not presenting an ID, right? And, and the charge was obstruction of an investigation into why your plates are expired. You know what I mean? Uh, that that sounds silly to me. I mean, you, you could just write up the paperwork, you got the VIN, you got, you know, there's names attached to things like the fact that I did that, I don't hand over an ID as a, as a uh, expression of civil disobedience, you know, to, to, to say I am a private person, you know, and I know the reason why that it, it blurs lines because the numbers are on my car, which signifies to you I'm part of the public system that this vehicle was at one time registered and it's, it's like delinquent in its registration. So, so, so to me, a more neutral position would be no plates, right? Which is what I'm close, which is why I'm having this conversation. because I'm very close to just taking the plates off to let you guys know that, Hey, I'm clearly signifying arrest, ar no arrest, toe, no toe, obey, no obey. I'm willing to go do it, go through it. However, lock me up forever, kill me, do whatever you gotta do. But I'm going to stand on my principles and my conviction that, Hey, I want to be a private free American person, the way we're supposed to be, just like if I was on a horse, I don't need some other man coming up to me, no matter what he's wearing, no matter how he's armed, saying, hey, are you able to ride this horse? Uh, where's your horse's uh, signifying numbers? You know what I mean? That doesn't feel very free. If you're not able to speak freely, if you're not able to travel freely, you may not be free. Again, Mr. Lantau, I'm going to talk to you like Slavenoid. Mr. Lantau, he's not going to say this, but there's no such thing as factual evidence. <clears throat> evidence is the lack of proof. Proof doesn't require evidence. That's why it's proof. Evidence is not proof. So there's no such thing as factual evidence. You can provide evidence of a fact that is not proof of a fact. You see how that works? I know that's like, that's going to throw everyone in a fucking loop when you like ride the middle and you just don't go from one side to the other. All right. It's like, they don't need factual evidence because it can't be provided. There's either proof or evidence. And if anything, there's factual or formal proof or evidence of a contract that you all have acquired a status and receive benefits and privileges and therefore believe you're a co-trustee and therefore are governed by that public trust code. Right? So there's plenty of evidence to that fact of that matter. Brian O'Shea just illuminated the evidence. You're riding around with public state of tags claiming whether you know it or not or the officer knows it or not to be involved in some commercial proceeding. It's just what it signifies. It's what it denotes. I'm not interested what anybody understands or believes or not. So the formal or factual evidence, as you put it, shows that these folks on some level, common practice, which has become common law for the people who live on the land, whether it's universally sound or not, or sound in the principles of common law, the common practice and common ethic has become fascism. You've all demonstrated that, that you all believe on the record that other men have a right and an ability to write code and govern you with it. You've all proven that. We don't even need evidence to that. You've proven that, that you believe that and accept that and operate from that premise. If you didn't, you wouldn't. So... You see where I'm going here? Now, if you think that these people on the lowest level understand any of that or care, they don't. If you think on the highest level they're ever going to tell you they understand that or tell you what's going on, they're not. Because they would undo their game. This is why a cop will arrest you, charge you with a dozen things. By the time you get to court, let alone trial, because nine out of ten times they're not going to take this shit to trial, because they already know you understand a charging instrument, the nature and the causes, the jurisdiction and the elements of it, which is more than just geographical, there's subject matter, uh, you know, again, 
somebody in administrative capacity who understands dual jurisdiction is not going to push the issue with someone like that because they know they've beaten them before we started. They can't arraign you. They can't rein you in. They can't get you in their jurisdiction. At best, they can get you in their presence to present special presentment. There is no appearance. There is no arraignment. There is no bonding and bondage. There is no accepting of the surety for the legal entity, the fictitious entity, you could argue, doesn't exist on the charging instrument. And I'm not going to create a joinder between my body and that legal fictitious entity through a surety bond. No, I will not. So they know, like I know, what the game is and how it's done. They're not going to tell it to you. And they're going to make you sound like you're an idiot when you go to try to challenge it or speak the facts. And then they're going to defer to what they have on record, which is a whole list of actions you've done or not done that proves or at the very least shows evidence of you believing you're in contract with the United States Corporation and have to follow its codes. When the whole purpose of U.S. Code and the Supreme Court is to govern the agents, not the men and women who they serve. So that could never be legitimate, even if you believed it. Because that's not how it works. Well, it does, because they amended the Constitution for public safety. The problem with that is they can never identify a direct threat, nor do they have a third-party impartial witness or claim it who can testify that somebody breached the peace or was a direct threat. All they have is agents of the state in the room playing all positions. It's illegitimate and fraudulent. Doesn't mean their system technically isn't sound. Doesn't mean they can't steamroll you. Uh, but they're not even doing their technical process and procedure from their perspective, let alone from a lawful perspective. Because they're just so used to slaves filing in there, doing what they're told, pleading out, paying the fine, and walking off. Fascism has become the rule of the day. Again, the law of the land is the law of the people who live on the land. If the people all believe something, then perception becomes reality. The objective philosophical foundations of law no longer seem to matter as much as the common practice. Okay, and the people volunteer to say, hey, I don't need to be free. I will register things. I will get my IDs. I will do whatever. You know what I mean? So... Um, so yeah, I just want to touch base. With you. I got to thank Mr. Shively for his contribution. He says, appreciate you and all you do, sir. Thank you, Mr. Shively. You are a blessing. You guys let you know who I am. Maybe even get some, you guys got business cards, anything like that? Yeah, I'll take some. Can I have them? Can I have your business cards? I don't have any business cards. Yeah. Mr. Lantau, come on up and show us the latest court dismissal. Now tell me when it was from. Show me because I want to put on record once again, we have over uh, I would say at this point, a few dozen folks between my private emails and the public displays. Uh, we have over a few dozen folks who just coming through here and doing what we do here have achieved dismissal, which is good enough for me. I consider that to be a quote unquote win. We don't, we don't have to get into win and loss, but if you can effectuate fairly regularly the dismissal of these complaints, not even claims, uh, based on the facts of the matter uh, and, and the precedent and the foundations of law, well, that's just as good as anything for me, you know? I don't even need a discharge or, uh, um, you know, officially uh, discharging. Um, what's the other term that they use? Uh, I forget. They have a terminology for taking the charges off the record. Dismissal doesn't take the charge off the record. The case is just expunged. dismissed because there's... Expunged. expunged. Yeah, that wasn't what I was thinking of. But you understand, no matter. Either way, it's the same idea. I don't need it even to be removed from the record. I don't even need, uh, you know, to establish a clear right and wrong. Dismissal is good enough for me because you don't have the nature and cause or you don't have the, 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 the facts that you need to move forward and prosecute. You know, if you did, you would. Dismissal is just as good as anything else for me. I'll take that all day, every day. Yeah. So this way, this way we've touched base. If I'm out and about and something like this comes up, I can say, hey, I've already been to the station. I'm trying to talk to the chief. I'm trying to let you guys know what I'm about in case things come up. You know, you guys know where I stand. Because um, like I said, I'm very close because it, I don't think it's fair for me to have plates on it and put it. It's like, it's like a, having a flashing light that says, you know, open for business or something. Because truly, it is. It's the business commerce world. When you when you volunteer for that, you know, when you possess IDs, you know, you you're just like you guys by by getting this job. You guys are saying I'm part of a public servant position, a part 
this public commerce world. Because a lot of this is going to get down to there's money, there's fines, there's a lot of money, there's a lot of revenue from what you guys and your officers are off patrolling doing. At the end of the day, there's money being extracted, right? There's money being exchanged. So it's like, to me, it's commerce. Just like if you, you could say that vehicle that has all the people in it driving on a bus, that'd be a more of a commercial commerce world, a public world, where maybe there could, I could argue there could be. Do we even need to point out the etymology of identification, which means treating a thing the same as another? So when you enter a corporate capacity and you get an identification card, you've created a person. It's like on your banking card, the all caps entity. You've created a person. So when you present that, you're treating that person the same as you would the man, the man the same as the person. That's what identification is. You've turned something into something else. Like I identify as a woman. Right. You went from man on the land, made in the image of the most high, to presenting identification, which then turns you into something else, whether you know it or not. The meaning is in the word of what they're doing, and they don't get it. If you identify as a tree, you're no longer a man. If you identify as a citizen, you're no longer a man. That's what identification is. You've traded in your original capacity to be in a venue for certain benefits, privileges, or abilities to do commerce. Because man and woman is not recognized in their system on their screens and on their ledgers. They need persons to interact in that world. That's what identifying with as the person is. Right? So oftentimes when they can't get you to identify as the person, their case falls apart. Because I'm not required to identify as something other than how I was created to be. You only want me to identify as something different than what I was created to be. So I lose the power and you retain the power. We're not playing this pimp and hoeing sorcery game. Not required to have identification to engage in natural rights because God gave them to me. Okay? The only way I need identification is to work in your world and in your venue to do processes that can't be done naturally. Right? So they're trying to get you to trade in your original status and standing and capacity for their corporate capacity, thereby identifying as something other than what you were naturally created to be thereby foregoing your natural rights from the creator. This isn't that mystical and difficult. Okay? Just look at the fucking words, look them up, what they mean from the beginning of time, and when they show you who and what they are, accept it. Just believe it. It's that simple. Tricked out of position, the whole world is pimping and hoeing, you just don't know it. Do you identify as a hoe? Yes, I do. I'm a proud hoe for U.S. corporations. Great means you're not a man or woman on the land, means you don't have natural rights. It means you just traded in your original status for that of a legal person under U.S. code, not a natural person. Now we're going to regulate your bitch ass. Thank you. Because you thought you had to have that in order to live under God. You don't. The fact that everyone believes we do is why the majority are children of the lie in Babylon. They think we all need to have an identification to be a human fucking being under God and uphold the law. You don't. You need it to uphold a commercial system that is run by, well, you figure it out. Could be regulations needed because there's a lot of people involved. There's a lot of weight on the road. Do we know this guy's brakes? Are they up to date? Are they being inspected? Things like that. And people are going up and down these mountains. I could see the argument there, but... We're getting back to pieces of property, freedom, right to speak freely, right to travel freely, being a free person, being a private person versus... All the legal society and legal persons are anti-God and anti-human. The only problem is all the other participants called the public have thrown in with them and become like them. So they're undoing God's law. That's the whole purpose. That's why they'll arrest you for failure to identify. You won't come out of your original capacity and be one of us. We're going to arrest you. Because we want to put you in fear and get you out of faith. We want to shake you from your original status, standing, and capacity. Just like Shaitan on the hill with the Christ of being. We'll give you everything in a position in the kingdom, all the wealth of the world. Just say you're one of us. Just identify with us in our system. We won't make this hard on you. It's the same allegorical story over and over again. In the public jurisdiction. So, um... I'm trying to think how much more I want to go on with this. Does any of this make sense? Do you guys I understand exactly where you're going? Right. 
you guys have any questions you guys right 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 so I want to touch on so okay I'll ask you guys questions so since I'm very close to taking my plates off and making it clear which would be a more of a neutral position because you could go from neutral to having some sort of a number like a DOT number uh, there's correction of status where you get certain IDs certain uh, credentials that can be presented that would be more on the private side um, there's paperwork involved um, it'd be a process to where since you guys are so used to people handing over certain types of IDs I could say hey here's some credentials um, here's a number attached to my vehicle it's recorded you know in case it gets stolen or something you guys can have this information that, that's been recorded somewhere um, for this public safety you know for, for, for you guys as so servants working for the public on my behalf perhaps you could retrieve my stolen vehicle you guys could help me out with that some of these identifying numbers may assist you in that so, um, but if you were to see a vehicle with expired tags as opposed to a vehicle with no plates, which would, for lack of better language, scare you guys more? Or you guys think, whoa, what is going on here? We need to investigate this situation. Or is there any difference? I don't think either is more scary. It's just, feels maybe scary, scary is not the good word. Yeah. But, to me, it'd be the no plates would be the one that's going to, you're going to get, people are going to be freaked out. Even if you're parked by business, especially with a vehicle, like I said, it's a little more dirty. Maybe it's an older vehicle. No plates, out of state plates. People are not even out of state. They don't even know it's out of state at that point. They're just like, hmm, this isn't the vehicle. You know, something's different about this car than what we normally see. It's a little dirtier, a little banged up. Uh, there's, no, <laughs> there's, there's no plates if you're driving, no plates. There's no plates on it. It's a goddamn eclipse, dude. Having a conversation during the eclipse. Um, there's no plates on it. Uh, you know what I mean? You guys are gonna get called out. You know, this guy's got this guy looks like some old hippie guy. I don't know what he's up to. You know, he comes in, he comes in he's quiet, he's ordering coffee and shit. He doesn't talk to anybody. <laughs> but you know, what I mean? you know what I mean? Like, so I just want to touch base with you guys and um I actually gotta drive to Vegas tonight and do comedy, believe it or not. But, my uh, goofy demeanor I drive an hour and a half. I'm not saying I'm going to do well. It's some sort of weird wrestling comedy thing. I've been getting paid to do it, but just because you're getting paid to do something doesn't mean you're good at it. The main thing is I'm just trying to like learn to speak in public without having fear. Like when you guys first walked up, I was a little, you guys could probably tell, I was a little shaky in the voice. I was a little just nervous. I don't know. I don't know why. You could come up with whatever reasons you want, but I've sort of calmed down since being around you guys. So this is a similar thing to being on stage. It's not so much about the jokes. It's just facing your fears, building, being willing to own a room. And that's sort of the fun I'm having with it. So when I show up tonight, that's that's sort of going to be my goal. Not so much about the last, just being a little bit fearless and being willing to explore myself and just being open-minded to whatever situation. And you tend to do well in that situation when you have less fear. Um, so, yeah. So, that, I don't know how I got into all that. But, um, yeah, I was just saying that if you were to see me without the plates on my car, um as opposed to having, say, expired tags in my car, which, do you guys prefer one or the other? Would you prefer me riding around with expired tags? Would you prefer me to have no plates on them based on this conversation? I don't know. I don't know where you guys stand. Right. Right, right. right. So I'm just letting you guys know that I am willing to get towed. You know, I am willing to go to jail. I've done it before. And it's, it's just a conviction that I have that, you know, that, I, that I'm willing to travel freely and speak freely. You know, come hell or high water. No matter how long I go to jail, no matter how physically harmed I get, no matter what lessons you guys went, because that's what happened the last time. A sergeant came, and as they're putting me in the car, he says, see, next time you might want to do something different. I said, no, 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 no. Next time I'm probably going to do the same exact thing because th you're not teaching me a lesson. And, it, and to be in fact, I don't want to say that I want these things to happen because I benefited, but I only became stronger in my most recent arrest. Like, it only, I don't know how, what, when, I didn't expect it. it I just hear it. It wasn't here. It was in another location. But um, for some reason, like, you know, my experience you know, going out through the process, I was just proud of how I handled everything. Like, I didn't, like, become like a bitch. Because there's one guy who, there's people who do this on, on YouTube and stuff who they went up to an officer who was giving someone a ticket or something like that. And he, went, he just, like, went up with his camera and started poking his nose in public 
business, right? You guys are doing public business, you know, I'm, as a private, why would I interfere with public activities if I'm going to be a private person? But this person did it and he got charged with the same charge I did. And he just recently got six months, but he went in jail. He was like, you know, at the pig, like he was just being belligerent. And that's, I'm completely not thing. As soon as I get arrested, I tell you, I was, Hey, um, you're hundred percent forgiven on my part. Let's just speak like men about the world. What do you guys think about the world? Is there anything weird going on in the world? Let's just be men. Like we're brothers, like Irish brothers, you know, like literally family. Let's just, you guys are forgiven. Like you guys got to do your job. I'm doing my thing. This is more for me and my personal growth. Like, you know, I'm just going to separate the personalities and any sort of ritual. So, and then when I'm locked up, that whole process, even though, okay, the water's not good, the little things I had to do, put my pinkies in there and stick out my tongue and spread your butt cheeks and cough and all these things, you know what I mean? Like when I'm willing and, you know, maybe you don't get as much sleep and you're in certain packed areas where other people, but I just try to make the best out of it. You know, I'm, I'm doing push-ups, I'm meditating, I'm having conversations with people, holding people accountable, people that are bitching, oh, I shouldn't be here. No, nah, man. You know, he said, I'm here for weed only. No, nah, when's the last time you smoked meth? Oh, three days ago. Or maybe the meth has something to do with it. You know what I mean? Being truthful instead of everyone else like, yeah, screw them. No, have real conversations. Be be a light in there. Because, because if I'm a light in there, I'm bad for business. And like, get this guy out of here. He's he's bad for business. He's He's exposing the truth of this whole situation. Like, just through his sheer demeanor that he's not being taught a lesson he's only getting stronger right i get to put my phone down I get to put the electronics down i get to maybe write some either comedy music yeah. i get to meditate have conversations with people like and to me it was, it was a very empowering experience like the, other than the, the crappy water and the food like i could get over some of the food but the water i wasn't able to drink it i was there for three days i literally put it in my mouth and it just just being in my mouth i had to spit it out so i don't know Eventually, I guess I'd have to start drinking it if I was there longer. But, um, but for some reason, things in my life have been improving since that. Since that happened, there's some sort of confidence. Something is something clicked in me that I has been affected, and people that hear about it, uh, just the love people show. Like, you know, you're standing up for rights and freedom. We're scared to do that. You know, thank you. You know. It's powerful, you know, because a lot of people are scared to do what I do. So um, I think this conversation went long enough. You guys, you guys seem like reason, reasonable gentlemen. We don't know what's going to happen. Just want to touch base with you guys. Um, if it happens in your town, so be it. If I get arrested, if I have interactions with you guys. But I, I figure at least I came, introduced myself, let you, go, let you guys know who I am, what I'm about. and. Uh, I don't know. Hope you enjoy mesquite. <laughs> we love the community. It, is, it seems like it. So it's we'll see. Weather. Weather. Seems like it. The sunshine. So with the being in the midst of an eclipse, maybe there's some sort of. Uh, and people say I look like Jesus. So I don't know. I'm not trying to say I have a Jesus complex. I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying it is. There's been some strange. And in fact, I could give you a hint as to you know an identifier on me. But my name, the meaning of it, um, has Savior delivering. But I'm not. I'm not saying that I am that. What does he say? Greater things than I shall you do, right? So you guys, whatever, if I'm doing something that, or someone watching says, oh, that's pretty cool. Look what this guy does. He's going to go to jail. Greater things than me shall you do, right? So like, I'm not, I'm not anything special. Like I'm just a man, fearful. This is uncomfortable for me. Like I'd rather go on stage and tell shitty jokes than, I was more, I'm more nervous having this conversation than in a room of 300 people, to be honest with you, so. That shouldn't be the case. Good luck, good luck to you. Yeah. So you guys, you guys seem like really level-headed guys. So I hope that you know. And if you guys want me to check in, like I could check in daily. Like, hey, I'm in your community. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm about. Even though I don't have to, but just to let you guys know, hey, man, I'm making the effort to say, hey, I'm not. I only want to benefit your community. I don't do. I'm a very simple person. I have very simple needs. I don't have any like crutches or things. I. I eat well, you know, I eat modestly, I live modestly, and I just want to be an asset to your community and be healthy. Like your uh, chief talks about wellness. He even brings up meditation and different exercising things, and the, the wellness of the officers is very important. So I believe that for myself as an individual, too, as a free, private individual, that wellness is uh, one of the key factors. So, so awesome. yeah. Make sure you drive down a little bit. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Thank I appreciate you. it. All right. Good to meet you guys. So like <clears throat> you're working it out 
you know, I'm not going to be critical of, of the, this and that you're, you're getting FaceTime with these folks. You're working it out. You're feeling them out. You're taking the temperature and you're getting them on record. Um, I'd prefer if you'd stick to the facts a little bit more, you know, let them be endeared to you, talk about who and what you are, but get them on record. Hey bro, if I'm riding around here and I don't have this crap on the back of my private property, are you going to stop me? If you stop me and you see that it's good old Brian, are you going to fucking kidnap me? Are you going to take the property? What are we doing here? You know, cause I, I, again, this is about getting them on record to cover your bases. So like now, if they are to stop you and arrest you, you could go to court and say, Hey, I went to the police station and I told them I'm going to be riding around without this crap. They said, great. We're going to wave at you when we're riding around. That's what he just said. So if you just make that a little bit more clear and get an answer from them so they can get put on record. And if anything comes up, you can substantiate. You don't know why they're doing that because you went there and the two guys in charge that day there said, when we see you riding around without anything, we're going to wave at you. We think you're just the greatest guy ever. So I don't know why they'd be stopping me and doing this now. This is the point of getting it on the record to cover your bases and be able to present that as evidence at court. Uh, evidence the, of a verbal contract. That's why the the written word stays and the spoken word flies. So, you know, you could you could perfect what you want to say to those people every time you go through those doors, but it'd be a lot better if you perfected it in writing and just sent them certified notice of what your intentions are when you're in the public. And then, you know, every time they pull you over and say, Hey, did you get my notice at the precinct, at the local precinct? And they check. They're going to say, have a good day, Mr. O'Shea. Be careful out there for your safety. And it's as simple as that's what I've encountered when I've exercised it that way, because it's a matter of principle. Notice the principle. Yeah, I mean, again, there's a middle ground. Part of it's establishing relationships. Part of it's being seen and heard. They get a feel for you. And then part of it's just putting your intentions on record and then asking them courteously before that beforehand what are we looking at if it comes down to an interaction here and trying to get them some way somehow on record either gonna say no mr o'shea if we see you around this town without the proper markings and the proper identification we're gonna arrest you and we're gonna charge you they didn't say that right so it could go either way because you really didn't hold them to an answer of what we're gonna do if they encounter you but I could argue at court that he just said, after all that presentment, which the whole main point is, I'm going to ride around without anything. You said, they said, great, we're going to wave to you when we see you. So anything other than that treatment is going to come off as odd and bizarre to me. If and it if happens, they object, if they do object, you have your notice of non-response. That's, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, it's tacit ahead. agreement. Yeah, you, Not you tacit, have it, though. Well, I mean. I don't I don't understand that terminology, but I just understand the principle that if you sent them notice and they didn't give pa you a response within 30, within 30 days, you can send them another notice saying, hey, you agree to this and I haven't gotten any response. You have 10 days to respond. After those 10 days, you take th that notice to your notary, which is your your witness. The second one, that's one of your witness. The second witness is the post office certified mail. When you send it again saying, hey, we agree to this. Now it's on the record. So when they take it to court saying we don't know what we don't we don't um recognize his law. Well, guess what? Ignorance of the law is not an excuse. And the judge is going to recognize it as that period. It's just a matter of principle. You've established a contract with them, whether they know it or not. Well, you have the evidence. You've created your paper trail. You've created every exhibit along the way to, to prove to these people when they created an impasse with you to say, hey, I have my remedy in my back pocket. And here it is. I don't disagree, but jurisdiction is spoken word. So I establish my jurisdiction, the jurisdiction to I of what I participate in by speaking it. And if I record it on a video, then that is as good as on paper. And I get their reaction and uh, their feeling and their state of mind live um, is, uh, in my opinion, even better than their non-answer to my notice, even though I agree with you about the written notices, but if it's in my local area, then if it's on, if it's on video, right. Like perfecting it in the word, you know, in the spoken word, but 
like if if you got it perfected in in the viva voce like they say in those venues you know then you could just walk up in those venues and handle that in viva voce and have the paper trail to supplement to supplement everything and just walk out of there victorious yeah. every single time there's because you've stayed in honor every single step of the way you haven't created uh uh you you didn't come off as the belligerent come by and out in public you're not right. a threat you've given notice of what your intentions are and nobody rebuttaled them anywhere along the way of that record so the record has already been established outside of the court in private yeah you've established a law you've written a law into the record saying i christian uh can take my property vin number and no one else has any claim or right to it on these public roadways in the course of regular business, which is outside of commerce, so to speak. So however you want to voice that or word that, you know, each individual has their their little fingerprint fingerprint as to how they want to voice that and put it on the record. And if nobody rebuttals it, then there it is. You know, there shouldn't be any more argument past that. And if somebody does pull you over trying to push their beliefs upon you, You've already established what the law is. There is nothing to argue on the side of the road. And you're establishing that with the, the head of whatever, however their organization works, correct? But through the principles, you know, you have your, yeah, yeah. It, you use the notice. Every, they pepper you and flower you with notices all the time, every day. And, and we don't respond to them with any other way with fiat. They like when we respond with fiat. Right. But then when you respond by responding with the written word saying, hey, can you prove your claim here? I'd, I'd love to accept this. However, I don't see where you have the right to claim, collect, whatever. And you have 10 days to respond to this. If not, I'm going to have to conditionally decline this this offer to contract. I'm going to have to respectfully decline this offer to contract. And if they don't respond and say, hey, well, you know, I sent you a notice for an offer to decline did you you know i'm presuming you got it you haven't responded that's my that's my notice of non-response if they ever want to take this matter to court i have everything i need to secure my party because i did everything as a creditor because that's how a creditor behaves in commerce because a, a gentleman always gives notice there is no money out here but you got to operate, you know, gentlemanly and make sure that you have perfected your your um, your claim on anything out there, because someone else is going to be presumptuous enough to make a claim against you. That's not it. I don't, Why do you that, think that it? Valdez was asking me about what I do for work? Am I on the clock? Can yeah. I just give him the name that the government created that looks like my name, but is it my name? Hey, bro, do you pay federal income taxes? With U.S. notes, he's not going through that shit on the side of the road. He may not even know what he's doing. He may just be trained on a higher level to get jurisdiction. Because mm -hmm. they're going to presume if you're operating in commerce that they can govern you. You don't. You could have a license, but it's you don't have to willy nilly give it to them every time they ask for it. They don't want to speak to the living man. They want to speak to that. You can have a license and don't have to sign it. I'm thinking about going to get all this crap and just not signing it and not giving them any debt notes. Well, that's exactly and They can't what take I my body and the property anymore. I have all this crap, but I didn't sign it. Now what? You can't compel me to sign a document and give me legal advice at the DMV. Suck my dick. You're going to you're going to discriminate against me and deny me the benefits and privileges that you're required to put forth at the expense of slavery there's a way to effectuate anything man no one forces you to sign those documents no one forces you to sign bond and bail and release paperwork as mr wizard used to speak about here when he was in good standing with this court where he dishonored himself in the truth trying to bullshit everybody and insult their intelligence yeah the way i signed my my license the agreement with the state was once i understood how all this worked i started putting it into practice i signed it I didn't even sign it. I just wrote UCC 1-308, all rights reserved. And then I attached to that application my affidavit of, corp of denial of corporate existence and signed that as the living man. And they accepted it. They didn't return it back to me. They took it. I got my license. 
You know, I have a request for Joe Moore since he's down there again after almost two years. Because the last time I heard and saw from Joe Moore, he was disparaging me and my character on Mr. Slavecott's pathetic broadcast. So I'd appreciate if he would act, at least act like a man if he's not one, and come on up here and have a back and forth with me, a colloquy, if you will. Right? Let's have a discussion, if nothing else, about what kind of sentiments you hold on to regarding myself or how much of those sentiments you've let go because you're back here trying to intercourse with the day's affairs. Could we do that resolution process? Could we create remedy here and resolution for a problem you and many others hold and have that I don't? I mean, if you're going to be here, why not, huh? Let's just like create good standing as I just spoke about. Like why leave it open-ended? I just wish more people... Go ahead, Emmanuel and others. Continue. I just wanted to address him while I saw him there. because He's been making the rounds today. I just wish more people understood the simple principle of giving notice. And if they did it more, it seems kind of like willy-nilly at first, so some a, a kind of a whimsical thing, like you're just sending it out and not getting any response. And you, you kind of expect a response. But the thing is, you don't need a response. The, the notice of non-response is the agreement. You know, if you're st if more people did this, then the government would have less wiggle room, less and less wiggle room. Presumption, be, assumption, tacit assumption. agreement and hearsay, the same thing they use. Exactly. So, you know, it would just whittle them down to, to no power eventually. You know, if everyone just understood the, the and it's sad that they don't teach this in school. I believe everybody should graduate like you should not graduate high school unless you know how to do us. A, a, a basic administrative process you know right you just, just did it right there the presumption is i have a right to travel the assumption is that i'm going to travel around freely and you're not going to interfere with me the tacit agreement was me telling you and giving you notice and you not letting me know you're going to arrest me when you see me actually you said you're going to wave at me and smile great mm -hmm. so now i have the hearsay for when i go to court and more importantly it's beyond hearsay i have firsthand proof of what went on so it's uh, presumption, assumption, tacit agreement, and hearsay. The same thing the courts used was all just used in that interaction right there, indirectly. So if they do stop you and they do take you to court, you're going to have a great video to show them and then say, I'm confused. If, if you were going to arrest me and do whatever else has been done other places here, well, then why did the guy not say that and state that uh, implicit, not implicitly, explicitly? Did he not state that he will be arresting me when he sees me? No, he said he's going to wave and smile. So I'm here now. You have me charged. We're at court. I'm a bit confused. It's better than hearsay. It's on record. Yeah, I try to just keep things like that out of, out of their venues, really. Uh, you know, for that, we have the playbook the you know the courtroom playbook to defend us but you know we don't want to have to whip that one out let's just stay in honor at all costs you know there's four i think there's four rules to commerce there is no money stay in honor at all costs avoid public controversy and i forget what the fourth one is and then they want to ask brian o'shea Oh, how come you're mumbling on and talking all about yourself? Well, because he's nervous and he's working it out. But the best part about that is we're in dual jurisdiction again, remember? There's a man in that costume. The more you yammer and the more you talk about your real life experience, the more you pull him out of his public jurisdiction and back to common law and common conversation and being a man. That's the one thing they're deathly afraid of. That's why they sit there and try to maintain that posture and that position as robots, just analyzing and interpreting. They don't want to be pulled into the sentiment of oneness. Once they are, they recognize man as man, man as themselves, and they no longer adhere to their policy. That's why by the end of the interaction, they were so dropped in their guard and just kind of, you know, in a malaise of, of just non-versation that they go, okay, whatever, Brian O'Shea, we'll wave, we'll see you later. Great, I got gotcha. you. Got you right out of your public capacity, your policy and code into the common law, which is one man seeing another man as, as self and understanding common fucking sense. You could argue it's the same thing they employ 
tactically that he was just doing kind of naturally, working it out. They will sit there as cops and talk to you as, hey, Brad, how you doing? You know, oh, I'm not the arresting officer. I'm just the guy on the scene. I'm not doing it. I'm just here to talk. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, you, what, where are you and your buddy coming from? What are you guys into? You guys like sports or what? They're just gathering information. They're breaking your barrier down to put you in a mode of man to man while they stay in a public capacity investigating and gathering intel. They use it on people all the fucking time to get what they want. The best part about it is when you're actually doing that as a real person, it works even better. To people yeah, who like, are not completely broken and inhuman. Yeah, it's like a tactic that uh, someone was talking about recently, like car salesmen. Like, like if I'm trying to sell myself or sell my ideas, you know, present myself, like they say, just whip out any fucking story. Just, just in the midst of, if, if you're trying to like, like, like close a deal with someone, no matter what it is, like, just tell them any fucking story, like about anything, like fucking. So yeah, there's something to that. All right. So Joe Moore is going to act like he didn't just hear me. And what I said, he's going to do that game. So I'm just going to time you out because I just directly addressed you and said, why don't you come up and talk about what you've had to say other places? And you're just going to completely ignore what I just said and then go on to deflections and obfuscations and continue to chat down there. It's not happening, bro. You know, sorry. I'm not going to give you a way out to continue to undo yourself. I have no issue and problem with you, but I'm going to force accountability for your own good because you need it, obviously. I shouldn't have to tell you as a man to come the fuck up here and talk to me about what the fuck you've been saying and doing that isn't true because that demeans you and your credibility. So you should be snapped to like clawing for an opportunity to have FaceTime with me and talk about who and what you've been and how you're going to cut that bullshit out and do better for yourself. And then we're going to re resolve and move forward like I have so many times before and probably so many times after in this menu. If you let it be, if not, you'll continue the passive aggressive deflecting manipulation, obfuscation games. And I'm going to grind the fuck out of your ego till the day that whatever takes me to fuck up out of here. It's a little game I play. It's fun. Go ahead, gentlemen. It's really interesting. It seems like the, this local, like the local situation is the most powerful thing because clearly they're not saying like, most of the times you never hear these guys go, well, according to federal law, like they don't bring that shit up out of their ignorance or, or, or training or, or, or righteousness. They, they don't usually point to federal law. At most, it looks like they, they go, oh, but it's our local traffic code or state traffic code, right? Um, so it's, it makes sense to talk to them at, the, at this level, man to man but also, you know, man to local corporation called the, uh, you know, city of XYZ. Yeah, they call it the long arm, arm of the law, but that's why you got to give them notice to let them know, hey, your arm only reaches so far. Because that arm is very presumptuous, let me tell you. And once it snatches you up into their jurisdiction, they like to operate in a secret jurisdiction known only to them and their members. So if you're not clever enough to push it into that question, hey, what, what, again, I have a Sixth Amendment right to understand what the nature and cause of these proceedings are. Who here is going to answer that question today? They're not going to want to. It's a very uncomfortable question to answer because by answering that question, it would, it would admit to a plethora, a plethora of things that the Pandora's box would suddenly open for them. And also then you force them honorably to show their hand by saying, hey, if you disagree, well, where exactly are you right and I'm wrong in, in that future hypothetical anyway? And they're never going to point to federal stuff. So they're only going to try to, if at all, point to, you know, the local bullshit, which I didn't sign. Right, well, the long do. arm of the law refers to God, right? Your arms aren't long enough to box with God, so you can't escape the conscience God put in you. That's why it's the long arm of the law. You can't run from yourself and what God put there. What we have in these situations is the short sight of man and their code who doesn't believe the long arm of the law exists. So they try to override it or compete with it. 
These are godless infidels. The majority of them in these uniforms are godless infidels. They don't have a relationship with anything outside of their thoughts, their desires, their wants, their needs, and what they think are their results in and of the world. The majority of them. The ones who do have the inkling of conscience or the connection with that force, they turn from their wicked ways once the revelation is given. The good news that your boy was telling everyone that day, we don't have to do this anymore. You never really did. It's the sick part about it. You know, we had sheriffs for a reason to double down on the long arm of the law. They come when somebody calls for loss, injury, and harm or a debt that needs to be paid. That's God's people on earth acting as representative of God here. You can even argue that's an attempt to override because the judgment is mine, saith the Lord. You can't swear on a Bible and not adhere to it. You can't make man God and the judge in this realm. Well, Especially if there's no loss, injury, and harm, right? You could argue in a community or a tribe that there's a certain level of judgment where you're separated from that group because they don't want to incur the liability of your twisted ways. That's just a natural process. You will get exiled, right? This is why, again, back in the day, motherfuckers, you should just get exiled. We, we can't do nothing to you. We can't harm you. We're not God. We can't judge, but we could discern you're not fit for this community and this endeavor. So you got to be turned out. Go your own way. Go over there. Go with them. Wherever else. Just don't be here with us. That's boundaries. You know, so that's what, what's needed for folks who've not caused loss, injury, and harm and don't do it repeatedly. Because sometimes you cause loss, injury, and harm in life as just a growing, experiencing process. And as long as both parties can reconcile and they're resolute and they compensate, we move forward. That's life. All right. So. Yeah, we're playing a dangerous game here where the, the prize is your soul and your personal choice. And oh boy, is it fun, right? The stakes are high. Your ass is on the line. Well, so many people, they, they ain't right with themselves, so they're just going to be at the mercy of the law 24-7. That's just what it is. You have to... For me, I, I, I had to perfectly understand that something was wrong within me, you know, that the world was coming down on me in such a way that I had to present myself in these venues um, repetitively. And then once I understood wholeheartedly, yo, there was something wrong with me and I got right with myself, that's when all of this just magically kind of, the veil was lifted, so to speak. It was like, I saw right through everything. I saw how I how to navigate honorably through every, you know, task that I had to accomplish in life. You know, because you had, oh, you always had the choice to do it dishonorably. And what did the dishonor get us? The cold shoulder. Right, but this was the whole point of the gospel, as I understand it, was the covenant. Is that man was under a new agreement to govern himself in the laws of Christ, if you want to call it that. So you could argue that that being died for the sins of the collectivists who already put him to death for doing what's true and what's right. Now you could argue their reasoning was he got physical. But obviously you can't put a man to death because he started whipping on slaves for selling out their whole soul and their their um you know livelihood and their future. Right. So there kind of has to be some equal consideration there. Uh, but I'm pretty sure the whole idea of that story was we created a society where we're all to govern ourselves in a universal law, and that punishment or punitive damage is really only meant for the unreconciled, irredeemable folks who lack faith and will not uh, right their wrongs, will not correct the record, you know, will continue to rebuke the covenant we're under, God's law, for man's code. And then they'll claim they're religionists and, and Christians. It's laughable. Well, can I share yeah, my screen? You get exactly what the fuck they've called in and agreed to. Go ahead, Timmy. Can I share my screen for a minute? It's perfectly relevant to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I showed this before, and it, I just want to show a few sentences here. But, like, this is the first, the first code. And when it defines person, it includes, it's saying whoever also, which is plural. And it's saying at, at all times, singular and plural can be either. But it says the words person include corporations, companies, associations, firms, partnerships, right? So all legal fictions. And then it, it, it also stipulates as well as individuals, right? And it's real funny. I showed this maybe a year ago on here and this used to be clickable but they took out the link for some reason i don't know i don't know why they did that 
Yeah, they but don't want you to really get to the definitions anymore. Yeah, so let's go further to individual, right? They say in determining the meaning of any act of Congress, any ruling, regulation, or interpretation of the various administrative bureaus and agencies of the United States, the words person, quote, quote unquote, human being, quote unquote, child, quote unquote, individual, shall include every infant member of the species Homo sapiens who is born alive at any stage. So this word include, you have to be explicit. Mm -hmm. They're saying it's only babies. Because if, it, if I was wrong, and it's just my speculation, but if I was wrong, why wouldn't they also write as well as grown members of the, the, the species Homo sapiens? This is no, why I'm saying that out, I, I think they're, they're not the even memory. claiming, they're not even claiming that man is subject to the code, in my opinion, based on this. Fucking amazing. Like, isn't this clear? Because there's also a, a maxim of statutory construction that the laws express not implied. So when they put include, you have to say all the things that it includes. And by not including something else, you exclude it. This is just like basic logic. So I just thought that was relevant because the folks will say, oh, I'm subject to this. Oh, and then you are because the, they, don't have the, they don't have their code, the, the, the spiritual code. They have to follow that. Yeah, going back to the Christ-like figure, you know, cracking the whip in the in the spiritual chambers that had been turned into commercial venues, you know, that's what that's what all of this has become. They've just they've taken what has been held sacred, the trust, the covenant, a sacred space, and they've commercialized it because you know no better. Because why? Why should we hold sacred, which was already abandoned long ago, as a sacred space? Nobody's coming in here and correcting it. It takes the Christ-like figure to so-called metaphysically or euphemistically crack the whip, so to speak, and get these people back in line, right? Because the heathens won't. The heathens will just be gobbled up by the beast, so to speak. But let's be accurate, man. Right, we talked about this before, Mr. Miyagi. It's a philosophical concept called checks and balances. Something that is unlawful can't be deemed legal, like slavery. It's unlawful. Doesn't matter if you call it legal. It's still wrong, right? Something that is a lawful, a right, cannot be deemed illegal. If not, then the authority is illegitimate. So if U.S. Code wants to outline, folks want to write down that you can't buy weed, and we understand that under the original jurisdiction on the land through the Constitution that we have a right to pursue happiness and use every fruit-bearing seed and plant, which the Bible we swear on says, then you can overwrite that. You can neglect that. Just like the Supreme Court says, any state that issues license, registration, insurance, and all the rest of it that that abridges or interferes with an ability's a, a, a being's ability to travel, um, then that code can be ignored. This has been ruled on. Simply writing down a code and and twisting the original idea of lawful and unlawful does not make it legitimate. That's the whole point of the Constitution. Anytime a state local or federal agent tries to codify something that interferes with rights, the authority transfers back to the people and the code becomes illegitimate. States have a right to govern themselves. That means everyone within the purview of that agency. States don't have a right to govern men and women on the land. They're public servants, not authorities. Unless you contract. Right, the word is expand. The alternative is contract. Well, instead of expanding into truth and understanding the expansive nature of the truth and the purview of the foundations of law, you've contracted. You've ignored all that. You've neglected the middle school fucking uh, rap that we got in middle school. Right, checks and balances. All codes have to be pursuant to law. What is the law? The Constitution. Any code that is not in alignment or commensurate with the original philosophy and foundations of the law of the land is to be ignored. And the constitution says, if pushed to a tyrannical treasonous point, you have a right to use guns to stop them. Did everyone forget that? Mm -hmm. That's their law that they're bound by. And you could argue it's universal law before it ever became constitutional law, contract law, or original public law that then became a codification. Well, you already know the 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 state of mind that the collective hive mind, our governing bodies have, 
when they want to take away all our guns because guns were originally there in case they got out, they got out of line. So, you know, it makes perfect sense that the ones who are out of line want to get rid of all the guns because they're obviously all out of line. But it's not the gun is more of a euphemism, I think, you know. It doesn't have to come to guns a blazing to get these people back in line. It just you have to know who you it has to go back to you got to know who you are, right? And start letting people letting these presumptuous entities know who you like you got you got to let them know that you know who you are and where you stand and what your property is this is my fence this is your boundary this is my boundary you know just in case because i understand how you guys like to operate right but it like i said it goes back to standing on business as a living man in this world if not you're just gonna get gobbled the government's gonna be your daddy is the is the standing phrase now right yeah go get lauren de laguna to sift through this and interpret it all in her own confirmation bias because it says over and over again you can't license register force contract on a whole bunch of folks for wanting to travel on the public roadways it's just it's a violation of common sense logic morals and ethics and there's nowhere in the code where it's explicit that <clears throat> it's legitimate anyway this it's is all, all it's this all written in obscure notice. language but this is all case law that you could put in your notice saying hey i have a constitutionally protected it's right. not good law anymore emmanuel see the lawyer laguna she made us aware the other day that this used to be good law now it's bad law there's other good laws in place that somehow make more sense or are more well, legitimate than this old bad would, law what i would tell laguna respectfully is you have a venue where you could argue that it's called court but Emmanuel, Outside why are court? you why are you doing commerce like why why are you structuring your notice as commerce it doesn't make sense to me no, no no the notice is on the private side that's a private process yeah but why would you include commerce supreme court like why would you include these things you, you, that doesn't make sense the Supreme Court I mean, is the Supreme Court. They're the they're true judges of the land. There are no but judges if you're, out of it. But if your notice is they're private, you're, who, you're, you're speaking to the man. So that you're not speaking to him in his corporate capacity as a costume. So it's just man to man in the notice, no? I guess I could agree with that. I, I really don't understand where the question is projected, but. Um, because if you include the, uh, these Supreme Court cases, in a notice where you're writing to the man you're not you, like when i wrote the notice to uh, the the um the arizona jail it's like i'm writing to the man john smith who at times acts as head of the jail i'm i'm going directly to him not i'm not talking to his costume because like first of all i can't so um i'm just talking directly to him and saying hey by the way Here's what it looks like all the facts are around this situation. And uh, if, it, if, it's, if it's not cured, it seems to me that this would be unlawful confinement, extortion, and barratry. What do you think? So those are, those are, those are lawful um, things I'm thinking about. These, these things called extortion and unlawful confinement and barratry, like, those are not legal terms. Well, Those you, know, are you don't want to push to whatever it is that you put in. You don't want to make it whatever your documents. You don't want to make them sound like paper terrorism. Come off as paper terrorism. I, I no, I'm. It's it's just honorable. I just want well, to I, establish well, for the record. Hey, I am this person. I'm a living man who is the third party intervener and the authorized representative of this entity that's operating out there in public, well, right? And that you well, can inter that only you can interact with. However, this person cannot speak for himself because they're a dead entity. And I'm the only one that could speak on his behalf. So I don't want you to confuse the distinction uh, that there isn't a distinction between the, me, the I, the living man, and that person. It's the way you word it. But the, the clerk, whoever the, the clerk is at whatever institution that you're trying to give notice to, they're the ones that are supposed to receive it honorably. If they have, if they have, if there is anyone that should rebuttal it, it should be the president, the CEO, the chief office executive, I, what, whoever it is in charge of that should answer and say, no, I got to answer to that because the clerk is going to say, hey, you've received something that I've signed for because I have the authority, authority to sign for. So it's now on the record. 
that I know, but this, I'm I'm being direct with my I'm staying in honor by saying the 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 details around that one was uh the the being that uh Polly knows was was uh seems to me unlawfully confined for 33 days or, or, or however many days it was. And I was just asking them about the facts. So I asked him about all the facts. He was, he's been in there for 20 days and then it was 29 days and then it was 30 days. And, uh, and I'm just telling him like, cause this is, it's the how same thing as that, man to man. How do you prove that you're unlawfully, listen, how do you prove that you're unlawfully detained or confined or again, because you're there. If you ever seen one of those like TV shows where like all the inmates and shit, when the show first off, it says all inmates are here voluntarily and, and they're here until and they're, I know, innocent, but I, they're innocent until proven guilty. So like it, unlawful detainment is not really unlawful. They just haven't been able to prove that it is unlawful because as soon as they what? prove that it's unlawful, they're out of there. Detainment that's what I'm ends. that's what I'm right. That's what I wrote to them about, dude. I'm saying it seems like this is unlawful confinement. That's not, I'm not claiming anything. Seems, in saying I say, is not the same as I state or I claim. Wouldn't you agree? I agree. Yeah, so that, that's all I'm getting at, man. And, and, and I, that, like, I can't go start mixing the jurisdictions by calling out the case law if I'm not subject to that. And, and if I, and again, I, like, I know that, that those case laws may, like, his title may be subject to that. But again, I don't, what is the outcome of that? The outcome of that would be some legal court proceeding that uh, he's got qualified immunity based on those proceedings anyway. So, so it's, it's what, why not just go law. straight to the, straight to the, straight to the core, man to man, if because he, he, he can law, be held liable as a man and, and as a title, right? Right. But all of that can be claimed as your property. That's, but you haven't done that because you, nobody files, nobody even knows what a UCC1 filing state financial statement why are, it's like, not commercial you know, dude i'm talking about a man committing a crime what are you talking about man well you're fucking annoying sometimes bro this is what they understand about you bro just fucking hurts on the outside of your fence will only understand the signs you post on the outside of your fence dude they're men they're held they they can be held to account as man right and i don't need to know the fucking ucc to write a notice dude if i write a notice to you and i say hey you fuck you crashed into my fence. You owe me a thousand dollars. Okay, I can send the same notice to a police officer that crashes into my fence and owes me a thousand dollars and say, "Hey, John Smith, who at times acts as a police officer, you crashed into my fence. It seems to me you crashed crashed into my fence based on this video evidence." And well, I'm, not, uh, I'm not gonna ask say, an argumentative question, but I want to ask the question, like, and it would be asked along the way. How can you prove that that's your fence lawfully? How, how do I know that you are not otherwise the tenant of that property, land, whatever it is that you're claiming you, you are a resident of? No, I, what, why, you, why are you only, presuming that I'm a resident a, now? Because in a court of law, this is where you're going to you're gonna go to a court of law to see- Manuel's got all the answers, bro. So how are Dude, you you're, you're, you're talking about a legal court. I, I'm not, I'm talking about man to man. This is the highest court there is. Man dealing with man, king dealing with king. You can't say because I I don't have the alloyal title that I can't okay, fucking claim that you crashed into my fence. That's my absurd. Fence and, be, and be hopeful that and on, and be hopeful that that man is honorable enough to say, you know what, my brother, let me give you something. Because and well, shut the fuck up, man. You're a bitch. Injury and harm. Dude, that's what do you? You're, right, you're, I'll, you're, I'll, you're, I'll shut up. This I'll isn't correct, you. dude. You're you, like if you're dishonorable, I just have to. Uh, prove notice to you three times that I did send notice and then I'm taking you to small claims court if you want to call it that and I'm going to win 99% of the time or you know if if I have video evidence right you're like, you have to show up into their public venues I mean small claims court is the, is this is like second in the tier of like a, a highest court in the land highest court in the land is a court of man like a court of law run by man so small claims court is like the second in my opinion second highest court in the land and and i'm gonna win i'll say i'll temporarily take on the title of claimant go into that court and because you didn't want to handle in the private so i mean if it's just over I mean, my I fence do. you should win if you did everything you did along the way to establish a record that you are the right in the courts of whatever it is you're claiming that you had a loss injury or or, or something to your estate and then the other part no, of I'm not talking about my estate. No, no. 
Uh, you're you, you, see now you're doing it. You're confused on the other you. side. You keep saying the words like injury and estate. Injury is what happens via a contract. Like I get injured at, at, on the baseball and the MLB. And estate is is their legal term for uh for, for for the like the legal title and the land and all this bullshit. It's just very it's very evident. It's it's clear of what I'm saying. This is my land. This is my fence. This is the property of I. And every you know what I'm saying. And you owe me a thousand dollars because uh, I have a fence guy that uh, signed a statement that says it costs a thousand dollars to fix it. You don't have like you're overcomplicating it, man. I mean, I I work with people that do business and they never let things like that go to court. They just say we busted your fence. Here you go. I know, I but I'm, I, I I agree. But I'm saying if the other being is in dishonor, I don't have to go and like. What, how is this? You're you're converting uh, a man's let's dishonor. Let's turn it the other way around. If someone was dishonorable and busted the business's fence, what does the business do? They just write the fence mm -hmm. off at the end of the year. Okay, but you're what I'm saying is you're converting a man's dishonor into some commercial uh, thing, and I don't agree. Uh, a, a a policeman's dishonor by uh, some wrongful some trespass or some wrong act. He's held accountable as a man. Now, whether the court will hear the case is the big question. But that, like, but they need some education. I, I don't accept that, like, because I, I don't accept this sovereign immunity bullshit. I'm not, because I'm not going to go after that. I'm not talking to the title. The man is still to be held accountable, as we all are. We're all, we're all equal under God. I don't think I've argued against that. You keep, but you keep like uh, bringing a man-to-man -man, uh, interaction, saying that all crimes are commercial. Like to them, it is, but not to I. I, I just like their courts seem to run uh, like they're all administrative courts, right? And it's all commercial to them. It's all corporate. It's all corporate activity. They tell you that it says criminal complaint in all caps. It says complaint in all caps. There's no claims. The only claims are made at small claims court or in the private. So I just, the, the only technicality I would say is, well, they need to be able to hear large claims. And, and honestly, like any fucking uh, judge that has balls and knows the law, if they decline to hear a large claims court, when I bring them the rules of court, which says there's no legal fictions allowed, here's the rules of the court, John Smith, Honorable John Smith, you're not going to have a title except that I'm going to appoint you magistrate and you're going to act as a court of law. Like you're just going to uh, adjudicate here between these two men and, and that's it. And you're just going to go off the laws of man and there's no legal fictions allowed and that's it. And I'm, bringing, I'm going to bring a claim and that man is going to answer for it. It's very simple. This is how court is supposed to work. It's how courts work for thousands of years. Anything else is, I, I don't know, I, I'm a moron. I'm not a commercial, like, I'm not going to pretend to be a commercial wizard to like, uh, you get what I'm saying though? You, I think you're just you, like, you can't, you, you, you can't convert man's dishonor into, into commerce. That's, the, that's their shield. That you doesn't hold me she, water. 308. The commercial code right here says I have rights from God. I just cited it. Yeah. There's something about your voice, Emmanuel. You have like this effeminate thing going on, dude. Like a know-it-all effeminate thing. It really just bugs the shit out of me. Like if the if there if the court doesn't accept the the the, the filing. Uh, I can bring any court case of any jurisdiction I want. Why? Because I'm the motherfucking king. I can do what I want. I'm a free man. So it's up to them if they're going to fucking trespass on a case or not. And, you know, it wouldn't make sense to do this for some bullshit for like some $1,000 thing. But uh, if it's something like important, like CPS takes children that they're not supposed to, some shit like that. People go and learn today. That's just going to be public, recorded. Everybody's going to get educated all the time. No, you have to hear this, this case. This is a problem. I'm not subjecting myself to taking on their title to, to, to what? To be subject to their bullshit and their legal fiction and all this nonsense? No. Because it doesn't make any sense.
So unless folks, uh, I say, unless folks are going to be able to say what the law is and what their law is and how they're going to execute the fucking rules of court and, and hold the court accountable to do their fucking job, this is what everybody that says, oh, the Constitution, this and that. Yeah, did you read it? Did you read the amendments? It does talk about uh, you, you have access to the court and a fair and treat, uh, I must have just speedy trial. I must have have it. Because whatever I did must have just, I don't know. I was just shooting in the dark, and I guess I got I hit something with it. Talking about me? Nah, I mean, like, my experience, like, I was able to get myself off of, not myself off of things, but there were things that were being afflicting me, like, through family law. And yeah, but that's, you already consented, the right? Principles, not no UCC1 codes or anything like that. <laughs> By applying certain principles, I was able to get you. She, she, one, two, three. I'm not paying child support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I'm it not saying that. I'm, I'm, of that. Yeah, no, you can like you're talking about a thing that was already started. Right. And then you're like, hey, by the way, I'm not latched to this. And you're giving everybody notice and then they can't continue. Like, I agree. I'm rubber, your glue. UCC one, two, two. <laughs> um, I'm just saying, like, if we're talking about being on the other side of it. I just don't accept like that. I have to, you know, play their game. Is essentially, what I'm saying. Would, and and you're kind of saying that you do. No, nah, I don't. That's the, what I'm trying to say is don't play their game. But but cite their court cases. How does that make sense? Case law is not their court cases. It's just what has been established. And that. That's, Why do that's I need done, that? That's done. That's done judicially by by they. And they do that by applying the principles of law. Right. So why not just skip that and go straight to the principle? Well, it, hasn't it already been, been established that you have a constitutionally protected right to travel? I, 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 according to them, I, I guess. Um, I don't know. But uh, according to I and the current situation, it's like I didn't cause a harm. And I'm not uh, planning on it. So this is pre-crime. It seems to me it's pre-crime if X, Y, Z happens. So it doesn't hurt to cite where, has, where it has already been established in law that there is a constitutionally protected right by citing I say, yeah. such person, such and such. I say well, it does because person. I'm not subject to that. So I'm not claiming I'm subject to that. So it's like I wouldn't go to... Uh, in case there's a doubt. In case there's any yeah, doubt. you can correlate it, but you're not going to cite it. You you can you can direct their attention to. I have no understanding of your society, but a cursory look at the code reveals X Y Z. It would be separate from your claim, right? You're not citing their code for where you get your law. You're correlating where you get your law potentially with their code. Because most laws have to be written in accordance with the right. It can't just trample your right. You had to but, but, but that right away by choice. Yeah, but but ignorance of the law is no excuse. So I can presume that they know the law. And when I just say it, I just express and put them on notice of my position in this situation. Like they they need to figure it out. For example, when I say on here for the twenty third time, greetings, uh, potential IRS agents. Uh, at this time, I don't accept income and I don't believe I've gotten any to the estate. But uh, if I do in the future, I'll be sure to let you know. And uh, if there's a debt that's true and, and, and owed to you and past due, then I'll see to uh, getting that handled. Right. So, so why, I don't, why do I need to write or say 17,000 more lines? Well, according to the IRS code one, two, three, four, five, six. This says person, and I'm not a part. Like I'm just, they know what the law is. Like they're supposed to know the law already. So I'm just kind of putting them on notice of my position, and then what else needs to happen falls in their court, right? I mean, yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't, I haven't dealt with the IRS like that, but you know, they're the ones. If they're he who asserts has the burden of proof. So if they're asserting that you're some type of taxable entity or individual, then they need to come with the proof. I'll have my checkbook ready when they right. have it. <laughs> right. So if they send something and then I reply with that, what like they gotta why do I have to burden myself with five like five hours of uh 
of a three page, you know, three page fucking letter notice to them citing all, all sorts of shit when I can honorably presume that they know the law. And, uh, you know, I just I, I guess I think they just make a mis- made a mistake. Oops. You just checking in on the estate, which is their right. OK, it's their thing that they made anyway. The title, I guess. Right. The trust, or, you know, whatever. I don't claim to understand that fully. The idea is that the game is already in play. It's set and you have to structure yourself in a way you have to create a specific token by which you play this game. If not, you're going to get caught up in it altogether. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying site the, code, site lob, do this, do but wear some ha- the original some token. Know how to wear them is what I'm saying. Yeah, but but like I, I mean, like there's already everything happening is already happening in trust, and then they convince folks. It seems to me to convert the obvious express trust between men, like. It, the it, it, like you're saying that I need to do change. something. If they haven't changed for six thousand years. They're not going to be changing anytime soon. Commerce is going to be commerce. You just have to create that barrier between you and commerce. That barrier would be a raft, a little piece of land, a fence, uh, something, a private. You have to create that metaversal barrier between you and that in- fictitious entity out there operating in the fictitious corporate world. That's all I'm saying. I don't. I don't mean to be rude. I don't mean to knock anyone's feathers ruffle anyone's feathers i guess what i'm where i'm coming from is ideal man to man so i don't like i'm not like trying to game the system and like get something out of the system so to speak so it's like i think that when if somebody does that then they have to understand the entity and how they intercourse with the system but like for two men that are neighbors and one's trading or transferring uh, property in this instance apples for uh property in this instance hey it's like don't try to tell me and them that they have to fucking form some commerce entity and become a secured party predator and uh, yeah a secured party predator jesus that's actually perfect uh to un- to like to actually live like i don't accept that and i i have a hard time there's really nothing that anybody could say that will ever fucking convince me that what I mean, I'm saying you is wrong. Have to live like that. Right? You could you could go prospect for some land somewhere where nobody has, you know, done anything with it and you know, start homesteading. And I think what lot, Timmy's what trying to people... what Timmy's trying to say is is he will not submit jurisdiction. He takes totality of himself and authority of himself and is not willing to play games outside of that and you have to submit to the jurisdiction it's a game of you know who's going to submit and he's not willing to submit so if he's not willing to then they eventually will or they have no grounds they they can't intermix so they have to drop the shit he's saying cut to the chase is what i got out of it i mean to say that you have that you're not subject to some jurisdiction at any point in time is to say that you're some kind of God's sovereign. jurisdiction is, is okay. truly right. what it comes down to. All right. But if you're a Only. sovereign, if you're a true sovereign, that means you have a piece of land. You're the one you have, who thinks you have, you have money, which is gold and silver. You also have a military. These are just beliefs. That okay. okay. That you're, you're talking about okay, living off of. He's talking right. about, the it's ultimate I mean. the ultimate law the law the law of god the law of one the law of um the golden rule that you if you don't do any loss injury cause loss injury or harm to anybody else if you're minding your own business nobody can step in and have authority to tell you anything what to do they don't have that authority he's claiming that he's standing on that and they right, have to and come either down they're going to observe your rights or they're going to do wrong to you anyway. In which case, you'd rather ride with God than ride with man, and it's wrongful codes. It's a choice. Doesn't mean they're not going to do illegitimate authority, presumption, and assumption and hold their beliefs and then try to slave you. The question is, why would you do business with terrorists? Why would you comply and submit to a terrorist who's not actually trying to get you to understand life and yourself and the truth? but it's trying to use fear to compel you to choose to yoke with them and cooperate with them. You've forsaken yeah, yoke, yourself at that point. 
nobody thinks like that and i'm not going to argue against what you say i totally agree with what you say what do you mean nobody thinks like that i just spoke no, 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 it no, no. that means i, I think, think like that and live do, like that and i do as well i know you do and i do as well but i'm saying like the majority of the people out here every time they spend a dollar you think that they're thinking holy shit because i'm spending and using this right now this is support and genocide and slavery 100 percent. like what 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 is my choice now throw this this baseless fiat out and stamp on it on the ground and say no 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 i will not and then say well now i gotta go find a way and most people they're not willing to do that i'm not saying that i'm not willing to do that but i'm just seeing it around me we're living in a world where people are just like whatever we're gonna right all you're basically saying is from the beginning of time is most people are not willing to go with god they'd rather go with some tarred next to them in an outfit out of fear correct and it's indicative like if i just pull up the top 10 biggest industries by revenue in the u.s the first is commercial banking 1.4 trillion now why is that because folks don't go to their neighbor and say hey uh i got x you got y like let's let's fellowship together let's uh let's take care of ourselves together let's take care of our own communities together right why, why, are, why are folks going and paying fees and, and trusting these international uh, institutions is, is what I ask. And then the next one is hospitals, 1.3 trillion. It's the same, I could say the same thing for all of them. You don't get to be up there and not for once get out of character. Man. There's something about you, dude. It's, what you it's, not, it's inauthentic. I, 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 I mean, I could be a goofball. I am what I am. I could. We could joke. I mean, what? What? I, I hey, we I could take joke. it. I, I could give it. We I fuck? Could take it, whatever. What? I could give it and I could take it. What? Give okay. what and take what? Seriously, guys, come on. <laughs> Fucking faggot. Man, rape him, Brian Seriously, O'Shea. Yes. See if you can get him out of character. <laughs> Threaten him with rape and and insult him. Yeah. Why were you? Why were you when you did that stream? That one guy with the biggest effeminate friend of yours with no viewers, just being the two gayest. No, that was my brother. Ever. That's my brother. Oh, he makes a lot of sense. <laughs> you know what the fuck happened to you two idiots? There's no one watching. <laughs> you guys were complete clowns for three hours straight, just rambling. First of all, we what were tripping on some really good LSD. It was an experiment. Yeah, right. It was nothing yeah. to be taken serious. Yeah. I'm glad you took deal, it serious, dude? though. What? I'm glad you took it serious, though. <sighs> That's what I do. I'm a comedian. Hey, guys, remember we were talking about uh, the toilet plan? Um, get this. The third biggest industry in all of the U.S. is Drug, cosmetic, and toilet wholesaling in the U.S. One point three trillion. It's the same as hospitals. That's amazing. So all we're really, really learning is if the slaves are not filled with nonsense beliefs, they're filled with drugs and/or shit. <laughs> oh man. Oh, that's what the during slave did. That's why the toilet paper was such a big uh, a big thing. Your thoughts, Brian O'Shea? <laughs> Can I see you, Emmanuel? Mm, oh my God. <laughs> Such a punchable face. <sighs> Get your gloves. Let's throw the gloves on. I'll let you take a couple swings. Condoms? No, oh. not those kind of gloves. Wrong gloves. Oh. It's not a freak off. <laughs> Fucking piece of shit, dude. What are you, dude? Hispanic and white? I'm Puerto Rican. Born there, raised here. Aren't you guys supposed to have like a fiery personality? Aren't the women supposed to be batshit crazy and will shank you? Where is that in you at all? Nah, I've, I've been lucky. I haven't... Yeah, I've stayed away from that type of element of the Puerto Rican nature. No, well, he, just ex he just expects everybody in any of the races to just be the like most miserable, most stereotypical. And when they're not, he's like irked by it. 
Listen, He's like, the worst part is, is that he embodies all the negative stereotypes of all the other races, and he's supposedly the master race. <laughs> yeah, I grew up, you know, asking my mom why we didn't use the Puerto Rican flag in the rearview mirror, and she'd be like, so what? So they can say, look at these freaking Puerto Rican. And I kind of I kind of got it afterwards, you know? Like, why do Did I you grow up with a father? Him? He was in my life until about 18, and then I... I found him again at 16. It wasn't a very happy union, but we got over it. We became men, and we're able to laugh and joke about it today. What, what type of person was it when you were when he was very, in your very life? Strict, very strict. My dad, when I was a young kid, he used to beat the shit out of me for whatever thing he thought was out of line. Yeah. And then my mom, she ended up being a single mom once he left. So I, she doubled down on the beatings. Yeah, but he left at 18. No, at eight. I was like around eight. Oh. All right. Things make things make sense then. Yeah, you got the spirit of your mama. Yeah, yeah. I was raised around I was raised wow. around women. I was raised I'm not gonna lie, I was raised around women all my life. And you know, they, throughout my youth they questioned my sexuality, but I love women and that's hey, what do what they I'm say in AA, about. Paul? If you spot it, you got it. <laughs> yeah, again, the thing is is you went beyond questioning your sexuality. You came up with full blown answers. To what questions <laughs> are you gay <laughs> <laughs> like there's no questioning there it's full-blown answers full-blown aids <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with <laughs> you got all the help you need tribe you funny? tribe you square-headed bitch can you just agree with the things like when truth is being spoken even if you don't fucking like me can you agree with it you fucking loser Right. Why is Tribe playing the fucking background so often, like down in chat sniping and never coming up? What is that? Does he think that's like favorable for him? Do you think that's working? I can say 10 minutes of uh, what is objectively true and he'll still have a snipe. This is where Snafu has to come in and say, Tribe, you're a square headed bitch. Hey, dumbass. I wonder if we just go into court and be like, you pogo pedo fucking. <laughs> Somehow works. They're like, oh, no, shit. I want someone to go into the next court appearance and just do that's you. I mean, I don't see how <laughs> I don't see how that's going to result in anything but dismissal. Because they can't get you to understand you're not being belligerent and combative. You're just <laughs> continuing with that. That's you. It's literally on rubber. Okay, your you understand the charges. You're obstructing justice. That's you. Okay, let's move on here. Uh, it's, it's. It sounds like soft shit mumbo do you jumbo. Plead guilty or That's innocent? You. That's you. Uh, just, do you understand the charges or the law or the law of the land? That's you. I mean, well, that, that's similar to the argument of I'm not the name. And then they say, well, if you, that's not you, then get out of here. Like, is this you right here on the paper? That's you. <laughs> like, because it actually is. So you're not really, you're always telling the truth, even if you're lying. If that makes sense, like Montana said. So they go, wait, this is you right here on this paper, this all caps name. No, 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 that's an agent. That's you. That's a corporate entity. That's you. You just keep saying that's you for everything because it actually is. Until they say that's the people. They go, well, who is that? That's you over there. Who is that? They go, oh, that's the prosecutor. That's the people. You go, no, no, that's me. You know what? If they go, wait, worked, no, you're the person. No, that's you. See how this is working? The people is that's me. The person is that's you. Are we getting anywhere here? Worked, if that ever worked, they would never air that. Oh, no. They just immediately go, I've never seen anything fucking as ridiculous and insane as this proceeding right now. Dismiss this. I will not have this, this nonsense in my court. Man just said that's you ten times. It's not he says he don't understand. He's not even answering. I'm gonna do you a favor. Let's just, I'm just gonna dismiss it. <laughs> yeah, like they can call you retarded, but they can't call you guilty. I'll take that. That's a win. <laughs> I'm rubber, you're glue. Anything you say bounces off me, that's you. UCC one two two. 
Like, can I just do like a nana nana boo boo? Like, what else works? You know? <laughs> I just want to quote right here, US code UCC, USC one two three. That's you. I rest. <laughs> Defense rest. Roses are red, violets are blue. That too. <laughs> UCC one two two. Anything you claim against me is actually you. UCC yeah, the thing is, is they'll tell you freely in the right. It's you got to get them in the right situation to then reverse engineer. They'll go, we don't recognize man in this court. I go, okay. So if you don't recognize man in this court, then you don't recognize man on the roadway either. So whatever went on that day, that's you. Like, oh, you were observed driving and do no, no, no. That's you <laughs> because you don't recognize man. In this court, you don't recognize God given rights. So, we're not talking about me or anything I did that day. I don't even exist in your world and in this world. Everything you just said, that's you. Has to be. UCC 123, I drink my pee, that's you. <laughs> right. <laughs> then they'll yeah, say, the hmm. only thing they can convict you on is drinking urine, and I'm pretty sure that's still legal and lawful. <laughs> Everything else is that's them. And this all then they'll say this all sounds like a sovereign citizen. Are you a sovereign citizen? That's, That's you. you. <laughs> because you're That's acting right. as the sovereign of the court while you're claiming allegiance to U.S. corporation in a corporate capacity. It's got to be you. Can't be me. I'm not even here right now. We might be onto something. Uh, we need a sacrificial penguin, Brian. You up for the challenge? Yeah, this works perfect. Brian O'Shea is a comedian, and he can combine legal and lawful, just like me. Right? I've always had a passion for comedy, and that's why you see me out there acting out and saying the shit I do. I'm just too free to be who and what I am, right? So it's like the whole thing's a joke to me. The whole thing's a big act and a comedy performance that is life. So it's like, why not? I'm a comedian, and I also uphold the law. And since this is a circus, we're going to clown around a little bit. It just, doesn't change the facts of the matter. That's you. Am I allowed to enter the courtroom with a red nose on? Like one of those fake... <laughs> See, why not? If that's part of your culture and society, this is where you'd establish the differentiation between legal... Most folks like DeCastro run in there with an Esquire and a suit on, trying to be like them. If you're great, like Timmy just said, if you're really great at what you do, you walk in with a clown suit on and a red nose to establish right away, I'm not a part of this society, and, and I don't understand these proceedings. I'm part of the comedic society. Have you heard of that? Mm -hmm. After everything I say, am I allowed to squeeze the nose and have it honk a little bit? <laughs> Why not? That's a form of, of, of protected speech. You're a protected you. class. You're not privileged at that point. You're protected. All comedians and clowns must be protected. Every king's court needs a good jester. We know that from the beginning of time. That's archetypal. So you're a friend of the court. By being the jester and the clown there that day, you're there to just keep everyone grounded in a good sense of humor and adhere Comics, to the facts comedians lives matter you hear that black people comedians lives matter now leave me alone is that thing honk uh league <laughs> <laughs> wait now do it no. i'll do wait now do a legal argument and then Mr. DeCastro, it says you. here that you're a constitutional <laughs> law scholar. Could you answer to that? That's you. <laughs> See? Right I'm away. How, is, yeah, how are you going to convict him? How are you going to get it done? How are you going to rein him in? Go ahead. Like That's then when they go in the back and go, can someone else get out here and try this out? Like They go, they go in a huddle in the back. They go, hold on. We'll be right back. They take five minutes, they go in the back, and they go, is someone going to put this costume on and arrange this guy in? I don't think it's possible. Okay. All right, you try. And then they go back out. All right, this guy's going to try now. Mr. DeCastro, it says here that you're a constitutional law scholar. Were you obstructing justice the, the, the day in question? <laughs> I mean, I have a lawyer. All right, he just failed. He's supposed to say that to you. He couldn't even do the bit correctly, right? So he just he just gave up his jurisdiction. He's supposed to just hop the nose and say that. This is what I mean. I can't give anyone advice anyway. That's I don't give you. it, but I can not anyway because he won't. Is that, see, I I kept made it so simple for him how to get out of court every single time and not plead out 
not get it reined in in a jurisdiction, you know, even create a okay. little bit of humor. I crossed over and became DeCastro. You did. As soon as you, yeah, but that's the thing. I called okay. you DeCastro. We're doing the simulation where what he's supposed to have done. I went, I was did, and you went and did what he it. did. I felt like well, I got like you. Him. That's how good I, I am at like the simulation. Him. I got you to comply. Even after telling you what to do, I turned around and got you out of your jurisdiction. Yep. Your clowny jurisdiction, right? The comedic society? I, I suppose so. And <laughs> Blake, from now on, it's that's you and only one squeeze. Don't double squeeze. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's one squeeze. Okay. That's you, okay. one squeeze. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd have just done that, I'd have never got you out of your jurisdiction, and I'd have had fun with this proceeding. Now, I'm going to act like I'm angry and that this is a mockery of the court, but deep down, even on the sh shallow surface level, I'm like, I'm grounded by that. I have a good humor by that, you know? All right, so let's try one more time, right? So it says here that you are charged with breaking code, which code's pretty much law. We're not going to get into it. Says you're obstructing justice. That's you. <laughs> See, I can't even, <laughs> I don't even know what to do with that. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you how to do the hit on me, right? Like I've always said, you know, this is why I'd be the best administrator in the world because I just pull you aside and go, hey, bro, sorry about that 180 to Castro. Next time, why don't you just come in with the red nose and go, that's you over and over again? I'd have to throw it out. Right? Don't come in there with the suit and the Esquire and try to call yourself a constitutional scholar and then say, fuck the pigs. That was terrible. Did you see Aaron over here? What he just did? His performance? Red nose? Squeak? That's you? The whole thing? I mean, come on. It's a no-brainer. You guys are, are overthinking this. Jose, you may get your fame overnight if you did this. I would say absolutely. Bro, I'm, I'm and I would say you right now, Aaron. It it's seems important. like you're being contemptuous at this court. What do you have to say about that? You're, That's you're, you're in you. Oh, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say is it's important to portray this in I just want to say right now, shut up, Aaron. I'm going to say right now, you are making a mockery of the whole justice system and the law of the land and law of creation. That's you. <laughs> All right, you know what? We're done here. Debbie, write it up. You can squeak the fucking thing out, dude. So yeah, try that out, Oshay. One of your you're like it's way better than constitutional law scholar and then fuck the pigs. You just do snow squeak, that's you. I can't see how it's gonna go bad for you. So the next police the station I go into, just bring that fucking nose and one squeeze. No, not cool. with the police, because the police is like we're talking man to man. If you're gonna do special presentment at court, then you you make it clear, hey, I'm a comedian. If I do special presentment, then I'm here like in my own version of persona because I I can't present in anything but person. I can't wear the mask of that all caps name, but I can come as a representative of the comedic society. So I've I've you know I'm adorning my my outfit here like you folks are acting as members of the state. This is my society and my costume, right? Red nose, floppy shoes. It's fair. It's equity. You want equity? You got to come with it. I don't see the problem. Do you see the problem? These folks in front of me are all dressed up in costumes and outfits, acting as state of agent. I'm acting on behalf of my society, the comedic society. This is our outfit. Nice to meet you. Cocaine. You imagine? Shit. Yeah, that's at court. When you want to differentiate jurisdiction and society and who, who and what you're a part of and what you're not subject to. But, you know, maybe like man to man when you're talking, you know, off the clock, when you're not asked to appear or present for a fee, you know, as a performer. You just talk man to man. Hey, it's Brian O'Shea behind the mask. Imagine O'Shea at the court in a full clown costume at, at the door of the court. And uh, he's got his uh, personal protection device. And they're like, you All think right, it's sir, funny. You think I'm doing a bit. I kind of am. But there's way more non bit to this than bit. If you put it on record yeah. that you were part of a jester society, like the man says down there. And you got a whole bunch of other folks to sign on to that and accept that you have your own society, your own culture, 
uh, your, your own ethics and that you operate under objective logic and morals, if not the comedic precepts of reality, um, they'd have a very hard time tying you into their legal society and legal system, especially if you showed up in a damn costume to prove it. Yeah, who's they're doing it every the, day? Who's going to rebuttal the efficacy to that? Say you can't, not well, you can't without fire. discriminating. Yeah. You can't without discriminating. And if you try to pull me through coercion and duress out of my original status and standing as a member of that society into yours by force or by fraud in order to do punitive uh, measures to me, then that is malicious prosecution. And it's 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 a whole bunch of other things as well. So you can make a joke out of it, but I'm way too serious when it comes to how ridiculous this game is and how if you want to play it, Try something like that out and see if it doesn't get you. They'll laugh at you. The lagoon creature will say, you guys are insane. Ha ha. You guys are insane. No, I'm laughing at you. I think you're insane. And if I have to create a society and show up at court with the costume of that society, just like you folks do every day to point out the glaring disparity in awareness and consciousness and who's mocking who in their hypocrisy, I'm all too willing to do it. I should be at least. Because there's more equity in that presentment than there is in what else is going on here. Like, whether you all want to accept it or not, it's still sound under God and the truth. I don't care how it looks, how it sounds, how you perceive it. It's still more honorable and equitable than whatever this kangaroo crap is that they're doing. And it's one for one. I don't see the difference. In the Joker movie, wasn't he a failed comedian? The Batman movie? Nah, he was. Yeah, blind. much like you. That's why you've gone a different way. <laughs> Oh no, that was that was the other dude. Never mind. Yeah, you're doing the why so serious bit. You guys are all lying here day in and day out. You've thrown away the law of the land. You're obstructing justice, and you got the balls to write up code in order to criminalize me, and then want me to argue it. You just start juggling and squeaking the nose because it's just complete nonsense. They know it, and I know it. And the more you play into it and accept it as reality, the more they think they think you're non credible. They just nod and go, "Okay, we got another one." You're insane. That's you. <laughs> everyone, in the, everyone in that room is wearing a costume in some shape or form. You might as well make one of your own. That's you. <laughs> if they're speaking their language. They're legalese bullshit, not even English. They're wearing their conventional garb it's in a their costume. territory. Yeah, their costume in their territory. They own the building. The city owns the building. It's not public property. It's private property, right? It's like Barnum and so, Bailey. Barnum and Bailey owns the circus. We don't know who yeah. or what that is. We don't know where it is, but it owns the circus. And here's the three ring circus for the day. We got a bunch of performers and actors running out. I don't see the difference. Rules. There's rules you have to follow here. That that that's our culture. If it's like a mime society, would I be able to communicate mime wise? Yeah, even when you go to jail, they pack 15 people into one car and send you to the station. It's like a clown car. I can't. I can't different. This is what they say. You, come on, Mister So and So. You got to be able to distinguish. If you really push the line, no, I don't. I can't see the difference. Sorry, I would love to be able to like understand or even comprehend what you're all doing and, and saying here today. I just I don't think I can do it. Seems like a big circus here, and I'm willing to play. I'm a member of the comedic society. I got my costume on. You got yours. Where are we at here? Who's performing first? Who's up? You know. I mean. You know, all the officials and neurotic folks and the rigid folks will say you're making a mockery of it all. They did that already for us. We're just, you know, <laughs> we're just coming with equity now. You guys made a mockery of the justice system. You dressed up like a bunch of clowns and you're making a bunch of claims in your fantasy that you can't establish as real. So what's the difference exactly? Except you took yourself seriously in your ego and hubris. Like in the UK, they got the fake wigs. Like They got the whole thing. They put white makeup on or something. Right. You're asked to perform and appear, not as the given and family name or the man, as some kind of entity. So show up as a member of the comedic society and put on a performance. Just do what they're asking. There you go. There's the perfect defendant right there on screen. There he is. 
I immediately give that person more credence and more respect than DeCastrated. Because he came in with a goofy suit on and tried to have another man speak for him and then pretended to be a law scholar and said, fuck the pigs. You show up like that, I, you got my attention. I'm all ears. He looks more like DeCastro right now than Blake. <laughs> that garb, that get up on. Huh? Yeah, there you go, Jennifer. Look, look, that's the ideal defendant for today's court. I'm crafting, <laughs> I'm crafting the ideal defendant. You know, it's since we're all playing a game and it's all one big courting circus, you know, and everybody's doing acts and plays, uh, why not? Why not just fit right in if you're going to show up there? I didn't ask you to show up there. You think they did. So since you believe it and you're going to show up there, why not perform and, and act with them and be part of the show? I don't get it. You'd rather just go down in the book as another fucking clown without the nose? Hey, come on up, plead out, cop out, pay your fine, or we're going to put you in the cell and be afraid and also don't have personal choice and also pretty much don't be a man or an American. You're already a fucking clown anyway. Why not go all the way from the other side of things? See if we can take it somewhere. Maybe it will find the hack. It turns out that's what they want it all off. They just wanted one fucking clown who admit to being a clown instead of coming in there acting self-important and like they have answers. Claiming to understand shit that makes no motherfucking sense. Who's the clown? I mean, DeCastro literally, yeah, would have been better with this than the fucking, uh, you're a pig, and then two weeks later, crying like an absolute clown, dude. Like, It's called the school of hard knocks, okay? So anybody can sit and judge like they're better than. However, everybody's been in that spot. So, you know, as I may not agree with how he did the things that he did, he's got to deal with that. This is backlash from that. I was thinking about it earlier when Paul's like, rah, like a bulldog. He's spitting truth. And so now he's got to deal with that. That's part of his growing process. It's all one big organism working together. So, you know, each person's playing their part, but we've all played the other parts too, mostly. Once you realize I will, that. I will, I will volunteer to go to prison as long as Lig joins me, as long as I get to be around to Castro. Other people <laughs> show up. But like, this is I what would... I mean. Either pimp right or hoe right. If you're going to go in there and be a clown anyway from the other perspective, just go all the way. If not, then be the king at court. If you're not going to present as king at the court, just go full clown. Don't try to ride the middle. It's not going to work for you. You go full clown, they might get some humor out of it. You might ground them into some reality of how ridiculous our life and lifestyle has become. They might at least go back in the back and, and like remember you. Hey, Look at Lig out there. Did you see the whole bit? The clown, non-clown thing? Yeah, that was great. I mean, we had to act like we were upset out there, but great stuff. Because it's all insanity anyway. You think they don't know? <laughs> the good thing is things are, things are on the up and up. People are waking up all over the place. Life is good. Wait a I second. You're going, you are the going full clown. Are all People are waking up all over the place? All over the place, Paul. I Thanks think they're more asleep than ever. People like you to spread this message far and wide. It's amazing. All right, he's going those, full clown now. He's going full clown. Three quarters of his friends and family just genocided themselves by choice, <laughs> and he thinks there's a great awakening happening. Oh, oh man. Oh, this guy's great. Can we get at the lodge? No, it's about the put the nose of information. back on. The nose is better. The, the, the nose called, and wig is it, it does something for you. It's better. I know. It's will, called. Will you join us at the lodge and do some of this bit? Forget about court. All charges dismissed. We're inviting you to the Mason Lodge, off hours to do this court non-court clown non-clown bit. That's Forget you. about the Great Awakening. That's obvious nonsense. We're slaving more people than ever and willfully. Okay, just That's let go you. of that dream. That's you. Okay, well, that, that is me. <laughs> this is hey, you. Dude. Yeah, hey, just so you know, I haven't had any drinks. Just so you know, Jeeps. No, that's not, this is lemon water. I swear to God, this is what you get when you get sober. Aaron. Sorry, I, I smoke some pot. This is the best presentment ever. I was anyone yeah. to get mad at you or judge you or anything? Like it's not even possible. How can they? I this is what they'll never anybody. do it though. No one will have the balls and the understanding combined and the good humor to show up at court and do this. 
Because there's a good chance well, it might somehow work. They'd rather I, just hire the attorney, pay the fines, and go sit in the box and then cry to Brian over the right. pay phone. All right. I'm going to state this publicly. If and when I have to go to court, I will show up this way. <laughs> you won't. Uh, you won't do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm video. scared. If it you're happens, dude, I'm not, you're not being I'm taken not seriously there. for the you Listen, know great the man that you are, is, like you, Astro. You can avoid. There's so many great men out here that just take themselves so seriously and they're so important, but so submissive and slaved out. They can't pimp or hoe right. Well, I, this is a I'm public decor, declaration. That's the whole point that I even said it. All right. Well, and, now you're gonna. And, we're gonna hold you to that. Know, if you get charged, well, good. that's what I'm getting at. And. I'm and, totally not asking my friend on friends at the agency to charge Aaron with something petty, <laughs> so he has to show up. I'm totally not asking you. <laughs> so you don't I have to show up. Five guys in the Fed, states, and locals who really like your me, and they're probably willing to go out of their way. Listen, if you can, <laughs> if you can respectfully present yourself to somebody using the truth, then you can avoid all of that stuff. Right. Let's do a mock. You thing. just come on tomorrow. Hey, I was charged with clowning in public yesterday when we <laughs> got up here. I'm I walked out of my house with this, and I was charged with clowning without a license. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't give an ID. Administrator, are you saying that in this great land, a man needs a license to clown? This is a travesty. <laughs> what does this land come to? Men shouldn't drink mm -hmm. out of straws, like. Yeah, but why clowns does it should. tempt you? Are you excited, Brian? Do I oh. turn you on? Don't oh. look at me like that. How do we hold you accountable if you don't use the costume? Like, will we double the charges? Well, that's charges? the thing. He has qualified immunity as a member of the clown society. So when he's in costume, you can't actually sue the man because he's in persona. He's wearing a mask. <laughs> He has a limited liability at that point. Oh, you better wear it. You better wear it. I saw somebody that said you can make up a hundred different token characters. I think it was that guy. Now, let me double down on that. Now, what if you got a mask behind a mask, right? Like you show up on record as part of the clowny society, and you're an officer within that society in rank. So I'm an officer clowny of the clowny society. That's like See, a double limited liability because you got two masks now. They can't get to who and what you are on paper with that. It sounds like you're in your imagination, Paul. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm giving you the most amazing good game ever for law and also being funny. Yeah, that's you. All right. Wait, are they not doing that every day? Are they not doing a circus and, and acting and doing plays and also claiming a hierarchy in that society of non-existence? So what? It's bad when you do it? It's retarded when you do it? I'm confused again. I think what, this is what wrong. My hallucination is not as good as yours? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> what, I have to get more people to join mine for it to be equal? How does that work? Would it be best to bring, bring the Society of Clowns with you? Why? Well, Brian O'Shea is a judge in the clowny society. He he retains a very high position in the heart. Brian, that's you. <laughs> yeah, so let's do the mock case. And you you want to give an honest presentment, but just wearing that and not doing the, the honk. That's what you're saying, like. What was the question? So if you you broke the clown code. If you were drug in a court, you would just put that on and then just present it how you as you were going to present as if you didn't have that on. That's you. you. That's you. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. UCC one two three is the uniform clown code. <laughs> right. It says right here, paragraph one, uniform clown code. This is where you bring in your own law and you cite your own code. Uniform clown code says that it is it's not proper process and procedure for someone outside of clown society to harm a member of clown society. Only clown business can be conducted within clown society and clown court. So we have to challenge set setting and jurisdiction. 
wizard was onto something. You got to write. We got to write our own uniform clown code. It has like 20 pages of the of uh, how the clowns uh, operate in the clown society and distribute IDs and insurance and all that. <laughs> yeah, you need, a, you need a clown policy to enforce. <laughs> We have to ensure that in the event of clowning gone wrong, that there is adequate recompense. <laughs> There's a adequate roast. remuneration. Yeah, a roast must commence immediately for the infraction. <laughs> Clown insurance. That's a scam I can get. I mean, not a scam, sorry. That's a service I think I could get on board with. Oh, God. Like, what if... If Baron was to slip and fall while in this persona and as the member of the society and be harmed in his regular clowning affairs, he would need compensation. That would be a terrible loss. Within the clown community. All right, we got to wrap up. This is going yeah, nowhere. I don't and know. Not, it, needs, funny it doesn't even need to. It's a journey, not a destination, right? Yeah, I think you nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, to conclude this hearing, uh, Aaron, uh, obvious member of the. Well, no, it's actually it's not Aaron because you're in a different capacity. Right? It's Clowny McClown or something. <laughs> So, Clowny McClownerson, I'm going to expect you to, to appear here or present at the next hearing, uh, and we're going to set a date, okay? Does that work for you? That's you. All right. Case close. <laughs> Final Thanks. word, gentlemen. That's it. Life is good. I feel good. Good things are always happening to me. Words create. Say what you want, whether you like it or not. Be aware first. Life is good. I feel good. Good things are always happening to me. Have a great one, Unslavia. Uniform cloud code. One, two, three. You're all bitch ass slaves, and that's not me. <laughs> Was that the wizard clown? Wizard clown signing uniform clown code? Securing his status and jurisdiction. Great stuff. Well, thanks for having me on again. And Brian, hugs and kisses. <laughs> See you later, Emmanuel. Thank you, Emmanuel. Yeah. All right, head clown in charge. You want to sign off, Mr. O'Shea? Yeah, thanks for having me, Paul. Head clown in charge. Definitely not opposed to bringing that goddamn thing in the courtroom. I mean, Zimmerman, ah, oh, fuck, man. Fucking it's Castro ruined it for me, dude. I can't, seriously, I want to get locked up with him, dude. But careful what you wish for. Fuck. All right, I'm out of here. Yeah, Zimmerman's not going to like that when she reviews that record. Uh, Mr. O'Shea, it says here that on um, April 9th that you claim that you wish you would, quote, get locked up so you could be backstage with DeCastro? Is this correct? Is that true? Fuck. That's you. You son of a bitch. I'm going to get that Paul Unslaved foiled again. Bye. All right, bye. All right, folks. That will conclude the Clown College for the day. Um, you know, Make sure you review your lesson plans. Uh, get all your homework assignments done. If you cheat on the test, you're only cheating yourself out of the understanding in life. So I'll be back sometime between 12 and 3 tomorrow, I suspect, barring some act of God of the state. And we know that to the average clown out there, uh, God and the state are becoming more and more one and the same. The state of is the God of the earthly men and women who are in the world and of it, of their father, the devil, children of the lie, infidels, as it were, according to the Christed being of Scripture, not equally yoked. All right. Nothing more I can say, Mazel from out west. And here's a little ditty on the way out that you folks can enjoy. Say goodnight to the bad guy. Me, I always tell it. Too when I lie.
So cycle a knife to the back guy. Go on, go on. The last time you're going to see a black guy like this again. The Great Reset's happening. But when you get all your pretty and nice shit taken away and your bullshit job that leads to nowhere and you're forced back on the land and have to be self-sustainable and co-creative and work with what is, this talk about your feelings and your ego is going to go right out the window because the, the God and the elements and nature are going to present what needs to happen next. Nine out of ten times. That's the difference between me and you. I got it in me, not on me, just like you do. I'm trying to work it out, bring the subconscious to the conscious and figure out who what I am. Am I good or evil? Am I real and true? Am I a narcissistic, egotistical deceiver? That's the difference. I'm actually authentically trying to work it out while you lie to everyone and project your negative aspects of self onto me. And I don't appreciate it. And the universe don't appreciate it either. And the students of life in this audience don't appreciate it either. This isn't about love and money. This isn't about chasing bags or anything else in and of the world. This is about the Philo Sophie. Right? The love of knowledge, the love of wisdom, the love of understanding of self and applying it to actualize and realize and get better results for yourself and everyone else. I thought that's what we were doing here. So let's get the game back in its proper perspective. The motherfucker doing this shit shouldn't have to talk about it because you folks want to lie on it. It's embarrassing to me. I didn't come on here with the intention of the understanding that this is supposed to be for business or a hobby. That's why I show up the way I do 500 days straight. That's why I have a care in my heart with passion. That's why I do what's true and what's right and see through you motherfuckers and get amazing results for me, for me, for me. We can't allow the generalized experience of life and everything it has to offer, good, bad, and indifferent, to hold us back or keep us paralyzed or keep us fearful or self-doubting or unloving and uncaring of ourselves. How do I know? Because I look into me. That's all this is. I can see further than the rest. I can interpret beyond what's told and shown. And I can amalgamate and communicate the cause and effect. God damn it. And the root of the state of consciousness and awareness. That is a astounding testimony to the work that I've done on myself in this world and in this life. And the practices I've walked with with other people. The question and answer, the fellowship, the co-creational endeavors, and the conversation that leads to understanding. Do you know Again, where we you can't are to false emotion right false now. authority. That is the cornerstone of cognitive dissonance. You can't say that I'm respectable, righteous, honorable, presentable, uh, and then I have balls, and then turn around and hate me or catch feelings over me, be in that and live in that. Uh, when you don't like it, or when it doesn't turn out as favorably for you as you would have hoped or expected, right? That's that. That's the that's the theme of a of a true common bond that goes long term versus the shallow materialistic worldly connections that come and go. It's just, yeah, it is what it is. Some people are down forever. Some people are down for the ride until uh, they got to get off, right? And some people ain't down at all. So through the life experiences, firsthand experiences, through the tests and challenges, you learn more and more who and what is meant for you and who or what is probably not going to be able to sustain the ride. And that's okay. God of all media.